Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. This is the second podcast for the first week of me launching my uh, live stream for menshrine.com. And for today's, for today's topic, I didn't have a guest lined up. i um, still trying to get all these workflows and processes put together. But this is a topic that I've been sitting on for a while. And I figured, you know what, today's, today's probably a good day to share it, especially as I'm, I'm launching this new uh, site and the new channel. So the topic is appropriately Transformation Tuesday, and I will be going into my personal transformation uh, through my fitness journey, um, more, or more appropriately as the title indicates, from fat to fit. Um, those who have followed me, and I'm assuming most of my viewers will come from the Instagram um from Instagram posts or from uh, my, my YouTube followers. And a I know a lot of you guys are uh, Rich Cooper's guys in the 1% group. Um, so a lot of you guys that have followed me for the time being have uh, been, I've, I've indicated or I've alluded to the fact that I was actually obese as a kid. Um, and that's where my fitness journey began. And then now it's to the point where I'm at now. Although for full disclosure, now I'm a little away from my baseline that I normally permit myself to be. Um, I don't like excuses when it comes to the gym, especially with myself, but uh, I did come home for Christmas, get snowed in, got COVID, and then after COVID, right when I tested negative, tore my meniscus, so I'm trying to figure that out, so I'm still hunkered down, I'm going to the gym, uh, rehabbing the knee, had to do a really light leg workout today because I was terrified I was going to injure it again, so um, these things will uh, affect the, the physique naturally, and as we go into this uh, photo folder, you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the process of, as far as where I was, what I was doing, how I was eating, how, or how I was training, or the lack thereof uh, when it comes to training, so um, before we get started, let's do some housekeeping real quick. Be sure if you haven't already to subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and then um, like the video and leave any comments. If you guys have um, any questions in terms of my transformation, I'll try to be as transparent as possible. Um, when I was going through these photos, I did, there were a couple where I didn't quite remember what age I was at or maybe what year it was, um, but I tried to put them together in a progressive order from when I was a little kid to uh, about where where I'm at now. So uh, more or less the, the details are all there. And then in future episodes, uh, we'll get more into the topics in terms of what my nutrition was like, what my supplementation was like. And then uh, hopefully um, if anyone wants to pop in, I'll share the link here at the end and then we can uh, answer any questions that you guys may have. Or um, if you want to share your own transformation, uh, we're, we're, regardless where you're at uh, in the process or the journey, uh, we can definitely schedule something like that for a future episode. So again, Pop down in the comments. Let me know uh, feedback-wise uh, what you like, what you dislike, maybe how I can improve there. And then, um, of course, my mission is how I can help you uh, in the process. And again, guys, remember, um, use this just as a an evolution. Um, this These things may not necessarily apply to you. Every guy has a different physique. We have different genetic material. We have different muscle inserts and things. But this should give you an idea of, I believe, what is possible once you put – this as um, an objective or as a focus in your life. So without further ado, let's get started. And I was a bit late because I was trying to figure out how to do this uh, this little screen share here. So let's see. And yeah, I'll try to make it bigger so you guys can actually see the photos. I'll, I'll, I'll blow them up and walk you through there. So let me make sure we can actually set. Yep. Okay. So there is little me uh, in this photo. I am roughly, uh, is there a way I can pull this up? Probably not. In this photo, I'm roughly, I think I'm like three years old. Um, I recognize that we were still living in Texas. So yeah, I, I was three years old. Uh, you'll notice um, I wasn't quite fat yet. I mean, I was, I was chunky as a baby, but most, most, most kids are a little on the chunkier side. Uh, you, you don't see a lot of three-year-olds that are jacked with six packs. Um, and if you do, there's, you probably need to question some parenting decisions there because um that should be impossible with uh, the hormonal profile of a three-year-old child. So there's me. I look like a normal, he happy, healthy little kid. Um, at this point, uh, my parents were still together. As you know, in the men shrine uh, community and uh, guys in riches group that uh, my parents split when I was a kid. So you'll see, and you'll see that this probably uh, contributed to the, uh, 
weight gain uh, when I was a kid. And I think a lot of guys that are going through divorce um, probably come into these issues too. And it's, and it's not to blame my parents or anything. Um, they are a product of a society that is broken. Um, I understand that. I accept that. And when it comes to the topic of divorce, it's really hard to shuttle kids back and forth. And then when you have split parent custody or things like that, um, you want to optimize the most time you have with your kids. So I understand it's much easier to just go to McDonald's and buy a bunch of Big Macs and feed them to your five-year-old than it is to sit down and cook a healthy meal. So I think a lot of that probably attributed to my weight gain. Um, again, I was a little guy, so it's not like I was controlling my own diet. And you'll see here my transformation once I got to the age where I could control what I put in my mouth. Um, I did something about the uh, the fat, the fatness fairly quickly. So there I'm in kindergarten. Um, I'm, I look like I'm smiling there. So my, my, my folks are likely still together. You'll see, um, especially like kids that are going through divorce, you'll see kind of the emotion come out, coming out of their face. Um, this next one, there we go. It was a year later. Um, I, I believe I was in first grade or so. Um, my parents had already split, uh, again, split parent custody going back and forth, which is never fun for a kid. That's not an ideal way to spend a childhood. Um, in my case, I, I'm, I'm an older millennial. So this was in the 90s, early 90s or so. And at that time, I remember when I was going to school, um, it was very rare where I grew up to be a product of divorce. So there was a divorce club. I think in my elementary school, there's maybe two, 300 kids. Um, I might be screwing up that number, but it was a decent sized elementary school. Um, and in our divorce, we had a divorce club. They'd pull me out of class however many times a week. And we would sit and talk with like a little, a little dinosaur about how we feel about uh, the divorce. And there's like five or six of us. It was a very small group. I know now that number has likely inverted where I wouldn't be surprised if it's five or six kids, an entire population of an elementary school that have parents that are still intact, which again is the sad state of our current societal affairs. Next, now I'm still kind of smiling there. So I think I was, I think I was six or seven there playing bitty ball. Um, I was never good at basketball. Uh, I tried to pick it up again, I believe, when I was like in middle school, and um, I scored three points in each of two seasons. So usually the goal for me, and you'll see, I was a, I was a big old guy at that point. Uh, the goal was to foul out as fast as possible and then sit on the bench and let the good players uh, stay in the game. So let's just say basketball is not my sport. Um, here I am in first grade. Um, you'll see that. I'm, I'm quite a bit bigger than uh, kids around me. Actually, they're all girls. Uh, oh, the, the, I'm, I'm bigger than that kid. and Not big in a good way. Here we go. Now I started ballooning up. So I uh, was six or seven years old in that previous photo. By this time, my parents had already split um, and uh, separated across a large geographical distance. So I, I remember this. Um, we were driving to Texas from Washington State. Uh, my dad's originally from California, so we stopped uh, stopped by L.A. and uh, met some uncles or uh, and hung out with them. And... I remember this photo. I was standing in front of a donut booth and someone, maybe this guy in the background said something like, do you really need to be eating that? And you'll, for those who are currently fat or those who have previously been fat, you'll, you'll remember that people make these kind of snide comments. I don't know if they still do it in like our PC culture or like body positivity, no shaming or whatever. But when I was a kid, I, at the time I didn't think anything odd of it. I'm like, okay, well that's kind of rude. Um, but when you're going through the process of obesity, which I also call it's, it's literally a food addiction, then with a food addiction, you it's it's like it's like for example an alcoholic or any ad addiction, you don't realize you have a problem. So I remember like, oh, okay, well that's kind of a weird thing for someone to say to a to a, to a child. But um, those comments did occur throughout my childhood, and I I, rem I remember this day. Um, um, I, I, this is probably pre comment because I don't remember being in a good mood afterwards. Um, here, I believe I was in second grade, so I would have been eight or nine years old. Just a you'll, you'll see, you'll see my face is getting a little fuller. I'm getting bigger. Um, the expression is getting well. I don't look unhappy there. I've got a goofy face, but uh, you'll see um, I'm roughly <laughs> roughly the width of two average size kids uh, where I grew up, and I'm I'm from the U.S. Grew up in the '90s. Grew up in your typical small mid sized U.S. town. Um, and again, divorce is not too common then. Um, uh, must be a good angle. I don't look as fat as I was then. I was 10 years old here. Um, I look like a an, a fat Fred Savage uh, holding the football there. And uh, if you guys notice the windbreaker pants, uh, those are awesome. I remember wearing those, walking around with a sh 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 thinking it was it was pretty cool. So uh, for those who don't remember the mid the mid 90s or so, uh, the the windbreaker pants were in. Here I was in fifth grade. Um, Again, yeah, I have a pretty full face. Um, at the time, this is like 1997, I believe. So uh, the single ear pierced, uh, which I know your screen's reversed because of the way the, the camera works, but it was the, le it was the left ear. Um, if those of you who remember back to the 90s, the, the difference between the two sides. 
And then I think in middle school, I eventually got like both peers because that, that was really that was really cool at that time. And then, of course, I became an adult and realized, well, I don't want to have holes in my face. Uh, so I, I, I got rid of that. This is about the point where I was starting to hit peak fatness. So um, I, I hastily put together this folder and tried to label these in, in order. Um, uh, so when I could sort by name that, that they're in sequential order. So right here is where I started ballooning up. Um, I did miss a few years, maybe from like 10, well, yeah, the previous one, I believe I was 10 or so. Um, and this, I was 15 right here because I was just getting ready to get a job and then um, start working actually at a fast food restaurant, which uh, adds to the peak fatness. So I was well on my exponential growth curve to hitting peak fatness, but I wasn't quite there yet. I believe at this point I was 16 years old. I don't remember how tall I was, but I wasn't done growing. So I probably wasn't too tall. Um, I did shoot up a little quicker than most of my friends. And then they caught up and surpassed me at one point. Um, we, guys that are currently fat or that have previously been fat, you'll know that when you hold all that weight on your body, it stunts your growth. And it does a lot of things hormonally um, and causes just a lot of negative effects uh, biologically and physically that creates an in ideal environment for your body to, of course, maintain lean mass, uh, uh, continue its regular hormonal uh, cycles and balances and things of that nature. So really from a biological level, it really does screw you up carrying all that weight. And I believe um, compared to people in my family, I'm the runt of the family now as an adult. Um, I live in Latin America, so I'm usually taller than most people. But when I come home and stand next to my brothers and my cousins, I'm, 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 I'm definitely the runt in terms of stature uh, in my family. And um, I believe that is an effect of uh, of childhood obesity. Um, I could look into the science and actually present this and maybe get someone on at some point to, to dive further into this topic or this thesis. But um, I always say to people now, and again, it's not intentional, guys, if you're going through a divorce or for whatever reason, your children are overweight. For those of you that have kids, um, get that taken care of because it will cause longer term issues potentially. Um, we know with this whole recent uh, viral scare these last couple of years that uh, from the get go for people who, again, um, pay attention to reality that it's it was it was overweight and obese people that suffered the majority of the com uh, the complications and uh, just in general for your overall bill of health or your or your state of health you want to make sure that you minimize the amount of adipose tissue that um, you carry on your frame and to be clear i have been i believe in the past i've been blocked on accounts for saying the word fat so when i say the word fat it is not a judgment call i'm literally referring to the type of tissue or the cell type which is uh, the adipose tissue and it's really just it's a store of ex or excess energy so take it as you may um and i always say too if someone says a word and you get offended then there's usually an element of truth to that so if you find yourself saying oh my god he keeps saying fat over and over again well I was fat. Um, that was a problem and I took care of it. And uh, for those of you that might find yourself in the same situation, again, I'm not, I'm not judging you. You have what's, what is a food addiction essentially. And to fix that, there are some mindset issues that you have to go into, maybe some psychology you have to dig into as far as why you are numbing yourself or sedating yourself with food as your substance, substance of choice. So here I was, I was 16, I remember, because I drove this girl to prom, and then I think she ditched me once she got there, which a lot of high school girls do. They're like, oh, cool, here's my ticket to prom, and then they run off with their girlfriends. And I think we probably snuck out in the parking lot. Yeah, I was, I was driving an old Camaro at that point. Yeah, we snuck out in the parking lot. We were taking poles off like a little tiny bottle of some crap like Burnett's brand vodka or something like that. Um, and you can see I was closer to peak fatness here. Um, about a year after this point, uh, the, the second prom, this next photo, is where I hit peak fatness. And if I recall... You can't see because I tried to, <laughs> I tried to fit uh, this tux to where uh, it looked, <laughs> it looked slimming. Um, but this is a this is a normal this is a normal size girl, um, and I'm quite a bit bigger than her. And this, yeah, this 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 whole the whole middle area in my midsection there, it's just a it's just a giant blob, or it's a giant ball of blob, or a giant, just a giant blob in general. So. So at 16, um, or I'm sorry, at 17, I was 17 in this photo, is when I decided to do something about being overweight. Um, I went on not really a crash diet. Um, I started educating myself. And, and at the time, the internet didn't have the resources or the programs or the uh, digital fitness coaches. Uh, so th there, it was, there was limited information in terms of how to get fit. This was uh, this would have been earlier 2000s. So there's still a lot of myths from the 1990s. Uh, like uh, you want a low fat diet, which you don't. Uh, you, you need a, you need fat in your diet. Uh, the macros depends, and we'll cover that in uh, in addition in topics in the future.
but I, I, I followed a lot of the diet myths at the time, but it still worked. I was still able to get the weight off and I'll make a distinction here. Um, when I use the term weight, I'm referring to scale weight, which is just your total body mass. You step on a scale, the number that shows up, whether it's pounds or kilograms or stone for you UK people, um, that is what I refer to when it's body weight. Body fat is the actual tissue, like the soft, spongy tissue on your frame that literally is uh, technically it's adipose tissue or a, a cell that stores uh, excess energy. And again, in the future, we'll get into more of these topics like how fat generation occurs or um, uh, no, noble lipogenesis and then how to uh, how to get rid of it from more of a, a biological level. And I'll likely bring on a guest, uh, someone that specializes in that field. Uh, a lot of my stuff is ane anecdotal. When I did go through these stages of my transformation, I'd get really, really into it, do all the research. If you caught me at the time, I would have been an expert. But uh, I, I initially lost this weight. I'm 34 now. So I got to the point recently where I have been fit longer than I've been fat. Um, and when I got to that point, my body started doing really cool stuff. Like now my baseline is set as fit. Um, I have put a, on a little pudge over the holidays. Um, I lost I lost my six pack that I normally maintain year round, but I do have an outline of it. Um, and I, I really engorged myself. Although I realized when I looked back um, over these last couple of weeks and calculated um because when you get good at calculating you you know you know what the caloric content of the macronutrient breakdown of pretty much everything you put in your mouth is when you've done it long enough so looking back and retroactively going back and tracking i actually didn't go into too much of a caloric surplus however my macros were way off it was pure fat and carbs which is a no-no uh when you're a little kid they say fat or uh, water and electricity don't mix well uh fat and carbs don't mix if you want to maintain a physique. So the way I describe myself now, I, I'm the same size I normally am, but the composition is different. I'm just a little softer, a little spongy, and I don't have that nice, dense, lean muscle mass that I typically try to maintain year round. But again, it's I'm, I'm up in the Pacific Northwest right now. It's snowing. There's icy rain today when I went to the gym. So I'm not too worried about it because no one is going to see with my shirt off. It is absolutely freezing, actually well below freezing. So this was about peak fatness right here. Um, I believe this was either prom or homecoming sophomore year. And about, I think a few months later, um, oh, uh, I came into springtime. Uh, so my birthday's in April. And coming into springtime, I actually got cut for baseball that year. I was actually a decent baseball player despite being overweight. Um, I had a good eye and uh, had good hand-eye coordination. So I could normally put the ball or put the bat on the ball and then i always managed to get on base i'm um, actually i crowded the plate too to put pressure on the pitcher and being a big old guy um and when you're in high school not everyone has the accurate um they're able to accurately hit their spots or have the arm speed to control the movement or direction of their pitches so i got i got pegged a lot uh which means my on base percentage i don't remember what it was but it was it was ridiculous and then my batting average is quite high too because normally i can anticipate the pitch um which I think is a problem with my knee. I was, I was telling um, an orthopedic surgeon the other day, I was like, I don't know why I've never had like a traumatic knee injury, but it was years and years of being a catcher in baseball of just sitting there carrying all of that extra weight on my frame and my poor knees just having to hold it um, all by, all by, all by their poor little selves or their, them poor little selves. And, um, and I believe that it was a, progressive injury over the long term that was just just up down up down up down with all that body weight on my unprotected knees and um, although I did train at the time uh, things happen when you're overweight too where um, guys that are in the know know that um, when you have higher body fat percentage especially as a guy when you're any sort of testosterone it um, it estrogenizes or it aromatizes and that causes a problem. So a lot of guys, like uh, when guys say that when guys are clearly overweight, like 20% body fat plus, um, so like overweight, overweight, and they say something like, Oh no, I have, I have good testosterone. Like, okay, you might have high testosterone, but that's actually worse because you have high testosterone. More of that is being converted to estrogen. And that's where a lot of guys run into problems like the, uh, like, 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 like the man breasts, um, Unfortunately, I didn't get those. I was talking to someone earlier today. I had what was called a gynoidal fat distribution pattern, which is uh, actually how women, most women that are overweight, their fat stores, which is more on the thighs, butt, and hips for whatever reason. So I didn't, you'll see in a previous photo, I did I did have a belly, but it wasn't like a big old basketball belly. Most of it was actually um, in it, it, like my, my flanks. And you'll see in photos when I lost the weight, and even now I'm still working to tighten that that flaccid skin up. So um, again, there are there are lingering things you have to deal with when you make when you have a traumatic or um, yeah, you know what? Technically, it is a traumatic uh, transformation with losing upwards of a hundred pounds or even more for for God, a lot of guys I know now, unfortunately, um, within the course of a year. So I, I did pretty rapid fat loss and. 
uh, actually thinking back, I believe I lost 85 pounds. I was 285 at 17. I lost 85 pounds in that first calendar year. And then, and then my body started changing a bit. Like I started feeling different and things. Uh, I, so I could just gave myself some time to kind of fit into my new skin. And then um, you hit different phases too. When you're super, super fat, like, like imagine obese people, like literally you can just stand up out of bed and then not eat something that you eat daily and like walk around the block once and you'll drop like a pound, uh, like super morbidly obese people. It doesn't take much of a caloric surplus or a caloric uh, deficit or surplus of energy um, or energy expenditure in your physical activity to start losing weight very quickly. So when you're very, very heavy, it's easy to lose a lot of weight really fast. But as you start getting leaner and you'll see, as I start dialing into like uh, low double digits and high single digit body fat, which is where I maintain myself usually year round uh, with the exception of times like the holidays, I'm probably, probably like 13, 14, 15% body fat. Um, and in future episodes, we'll do a breakdown of what that looks like and then how to track that. Um, I've developed body fat trackers, weight loss trackers, all of that. It'll, it might be a premium offer. Um, on menshine.com. So I'll get to that in the future. But um, but for now, I'm just talking in terms of body fat percentages, uh, 13 to 15%. That's still in, the, it's still in the athletic range, I believe 15 to 18%. And again, it's been a while since I've tracked this stuff because um, I've got it down now. I believe 15 to 18% is probably average. Uh, 18 to 21%, you're getting up there. And then 21%, uh, you're your fat guys. Um, for females, I don't remember the conversions, but it is different because females have additional body fat in areas that are required for well, yeah, evolu biological evolutionary purposes for, for reproduction. So um, a super, super lean female might be equivalent or more um, body fat wise than a guy who's uh, athletic or lean or, or average. So take that into consideration for, uh, for you girls watching. So here's peak fatness. And then there's a lapse. Um, I didn't I had a camera, so I lost all the weight at 17. I moved to Mexico right after I graduated high school. And uh, down there is when I started lifting. During that time, I did have like a like an old school, like Canon, like old school uh, digital camera. There weren't smartphones yet. So all of those photos ended up on my college laptop, which was conveniently stolen from me in California a couple of years back. Um, and luckily, the guy who stole it had it on his person to commission a crime immediately thereafter. So my laptop is locked up uh, at the San, San Diego Police Department, and uh, it will be released in 2024 because it's an ongoing active case. I don't know if the guy got like probation or whatever. Um, I call them a couple times a year, and they pretty much tell me, yeah, it's an ongoing case. It's an ongoing investigation. You can't do anything about it. Um, the, I say lucky because the good thing is I believe at some point I bought some Bitcoin like way, way early on. I don't remember how much. I remember spending $200, but... I don't remember if it was pennies or remember or if it was already in the thousands or tens of thousands or whatever. So in 2024, I might have a nice surprise. I'm not banking on it. Um, it is California. The fact that my laptop was stolen and then locked up and withheld from me in the first place is ridiculous. Um, but that's that's the state of that state, which is why I no longer live in that state, amongst many reasons. So um, at 18, I moved abroad. I went down to Mexico, um, wanted to completely recreate myself. And then I had the opportunity to come up to do um, an intensive, like six week Spanish language course. And uh, very quickly, I'm uh, apparently I'm good at languages. So very quickly, I started picking it up. When I arrived in Mexico, my second day, I tested into like a basic level Spanish class. Um, after the six week initial like boot camp, I was actually good enough to enroll as a Mexican uh, university student, which was awesome because I got to pay Mexican tuition, which I went to one of the best schools in the country, but the tuition was considerably cheaper than the state school I went to. And, um, and then I got to stay there. So, I, so a lot of, well, I don't want to say a lot of overweight people, but in my case, since I was overweight, I didn't have much of a social life. I didn't have like much of a dating life or anything. So uh, I spent a lot of time in my room studying and writing music and doing more creative and academic pursuits which was great because I was ahead in school, although I'm from a, I'm from a conservative town in a liberal state. So at that time I was not allowed to graduate early. They put um, a required class that uh, you have to take in your fourth year of high school, second semester that I essentially just sat in my hometown and worked for a year and a half after I was already ready to graduate to join, take a zero hour class uh, that was required by the state to get my high school diploma and then walk. Um, looking back, I probably could have figured out a way around that, but Guys, when you're really, really fat, um, your self-esteem is not quite there and your brain gets clouded. Um, it really does affect your judgment and the way your entire body works. So uh, fast forward, I was in Mexico um, at like 19, from 18, 19, 20, I was, I was there to like 23 years old, but I'd come back to the States and work. I had a 
job at a video store. And then um, I worked, uh, I started working for a defense contractor at that time. And they were putting me on projects and stuff. Um, they were really cool. They're putting me on projects in Latin America. So I could go. So if I had like uh, some time off from school and in Mexico, they have holidays for everything. They have like day of the kid, like day of the tortilla, like all sorts of crazy stuff. So whenever there was a federal holiday, um, I'd take off and travel and, um, and the, defense contractor I worked for would usually try to find work for me um, in Latin or, or Central America more specifically. So this was my girlfriend when I was playing um, baseball in Guadalajara. So at one point I did uh, get recruited to play on the team. It is not like the U S university system. So, uh, so for guys to think like, Oh, he's some big hotshot. I wasn't, it was a very small private school. Um, we probably had the attendance equal to that of a high school game, but I got to travel the entire country for free and date uh, and date beautiful women. Um, so this was my girlfriend for a couple of years in Mexico. Um, she was a volleyball player. I was a baseball player and we were on the road a lot together, which was awesome because we got to see the country together, which was really cool. So you'll see here, I'm a little leaner. I'm still have kind of the baby face. Um, at this time, I didn't know how to train correctly to like really get my muscle mass and my leanness to the point it is now, but, um, I was starting to train and my body was starting to change. And it's nice when you lose a hundred pounds and all of a sudden you have like a sudden increase in strength and lean muscle mass. Um, you can move through space in ways that you couldn't do it before. So another benefit of all of them, uh, of the many, many benefits of uh, losing fat. And yeah, th this is my girlfriend for a couple years. Um, we stayed in contact over the years, but she's she's conservative. So she's she's married now and doing the kid thing and uh, uh, no Instagram, no social media. So I'm not, not sure, too sure what happened to her, but I actually had a really good relationship to her. Um, she again, um, this was 15 years ago or so, even more, uh, in Mexico. So more the, at that time, Mexico is still way more traditional than the English speaking world, but, um, but even more so back then, again, there was no social media, there was no online dating apps or anything like that. So you dated girls that were within your proximity. Uh, we were classmates and, uh, we, we trained together in the, there's a general gym for the campus and there's an athletic gym. So we trained, we trained in the nice gym, the athletic gym, and then we were on the road. Um, so that's that story. And I'll show pictures of more girls just so you can see the evolution there. Um, look more so in the body language. Here, when I refer to my red pill transformation, I always say that um, I did have I did not have problems with girls after I lost the weight and when I was in college just because of the environment. Um, I was a foreign guy in Mexico having the time of my life, learning the language and traveling all over Latin America. So you can see my face like I'm, I, I'm pretty happy there. Now, what happens with a lot of guys, especially in the U.S., is your college years or your glory days, um, even for guys that don't go to college, maybe your high school years or your glory days. And, and let me clarify, college years, I mean college age range. So from like 18 to 22 or 23, I know guys go different routes. Uh, for my foreign friends listening, in the U.S., usually, especially if you grew up in the country, you either go to the city or go to a college town uh, and get into the university system, pay a lot of money, get worthless degrees unless you're in the STEM uh, fields, and then enter the corporate rat race, um, keeping up with the Joneses type lifestyle, or where I'm from, a lot of guys go Marine. If you don't go to college or you don't join the Marines or one of the uh, branches of the armed forces, then you end up being a drug addict or alcoholic and you just kind of, you kind of wash away. So there's not a lot of options for, for people in the U S Oh, and one more, uh, the trades. So I do live in a, in an area where there's a large defense contracting presence and a lot of guys join the trades. And I think now, so that's, that's more of the way to go, but well, again, we'll discuss these topics in the future. Um, so fast forward at this age, yeah, I was probably like 21, 22, 23, somewhere around there. Started, came back to the U.S., started working. Um, at one point, uh, I was living in California. So I was still going to the gym. But again, I never really learned how to train or eat correctly. Um, and the uh – -oh, I lost my screen. Let me get back there. So I never learned how to eat or train correctly. Um, and that's because when I was in Mexico, we actually had coaches, uh, which kind of laid that stuff out for us. We had like uh, nutritionists and dietitians and, and coaches, which was really nice. because You didn't have to think so much. And I actually had a coaching call earlier today. And I asked the guy, you know, what are you looking for for your physical goals? How do you how do you want to go about it? Do you need someone to tell you exactly what to do and not explain why? Or um, this guy's more on the on the uh, intellectual side. Or do you want me to give you a framework, explain the why behind it, and then we'll work together to uh, to create a plan that you are going to stick with consistently, that you enjoy doing, and that doesn't deviate from uh, your current routine or lifestyle. So, um, so I think a lot of guys fall into this trap that I did when I was in my mid twenties, where I went to the gym every day. I never stopped training. My goal at that time, and guys, you have to have stated physique and fitness goals. My goal at the time was very low. It was a low bar that I set was just don't be obese again. Don't be fat again. 
Um, so in these next few photos, I think I look like most average guys that aren't complete slobs or completely let themselves go. Um, I, uh, you'll see here, there's a shirtless one coming up where I had, um, I had a skinny fat look. You can see like when I put on weight, it still goes around, um, kind of the midsection and the, in the thighs and, uh, and, and butt and all that. Again, it's a go gynoid all fat distribution pattern. Um, my shirt's kind of weird there, but I did, I never had like a real big belly, uh, because when I lost all the weight, I didn't really have to do much of the belly fat. It's the flanks again, that's, that's hanging off. Which you should be able to see in this next photo. Yeah, so you'll see there's a, there's a there's some little flank there's some little flanks here on the side. Um, this is what most guys that come to me and ask me for fitness advice. This is usually what they look like, unless again they're super super skinny or they're morbidly obese. Most guys fall in the skinny fat category, especially guys in their early mid uh, even late twenties. A lot of that starts changing in your in your thirties. But if you spend your time in your twenties building your physique and dialing in your nutrition and the way your body works, um, your thirties actually becomes easier. Um, a lot of people in society like to lie. They like to say things like you can't learn a second language if you're not a kid. Um, BS. I lived in Mexico and within months I was speaking Spanish to the point where I was able to enroll as a Mexican student, which again was awesome. Um, and then another one is once you hit 30, it's hard to keep the weight off. Um, again, that's a lie. Um, that's what losers and lazy people say. So if you're following me and you have that mindset, that's fine. Uh, hopefully we start to change that. And that is my purpose for being here. And if you want to do that again, like comment, subscribe, uh, uh, share the video, uh, you know, show some love. And if you don't fall in that category, we're like, Hey, it's completely fine being fat. And I'm happy, uh, any, you know, happy at any size, then you're, you're lying to yourself. So I don't know how much you're going to, you're going to get out of me because, um, I don't deal with liars outside of me because I don't like to lie to myself and I'll catch myself. I, I caught myself earlier here today. I'll catch myself in lies every now and then like, Oh, it's Christmas time. Yeah. You know, I, I overate and I got the bad knee and, but in my head, it's like, it is unacceptable for me to not be within a very defined body fat range. And usually for me, that's 10 to 12%. Uh, percent. And in the future or guys that uh, pay for my coaching services or join my uh, premium community, I'm going to launch here shortly. I'll break down how to do that. There's different phases in the evolution where once, once you get to like, 15% body fat. Well, to get from 15% to 12% body fat, there's different considerations than to get from 21% to 18%. Or once you want to start going into single digits, then there's different considerations too. And there's little tweaks you have to make to your diet, your training regimen, and your schedule. And again, uh, this will be on the uh, behind a paywall, but on the premium side, um, we can dive into these things because luckily I am a nerd and I track absolutely everything. So again, yeah, that's a skinny fat look, which at this time, I was living in San Diego. Um, I believe I had a small startup, like alternative financial lending business. Uh, we're more of a, we were more of like a digital brokerage, and then we did some sales in office too. So a good buddy of mine and I um, actually started that together. Uh, we did pretty well uh, for our first. Well, how long do we have? Like year, year and a half. So first couple quarters were lean. Uh, we started doing pretty well. We had a lot of receivables on the books, and being naive young guys that have no experience at business, we thought like, well, hey, we have all this money that's going to be coming in over the next couple of quarters. Let's upgrade the office and let's do the furniture and let's get the cars and let's get the nice high rise. And, um, and unfortunately a lot of those deals didn't fall through. Oh, and we hired full-time employees that I had to pay out of pocket at one point when we were no longer making any money. So, uh, novice mistakes, uh, for, for, for business, uh, you, you live and you learn, but this essentially started kicking off my transformation. So in this photo here, I think I was probably 25, 26 years old. You'll see this next set of photos. Um, you, you, if you saw the, the, the quick, uh, little glimpse of it, I got a little ahead of myself. Um, I was actually kissing a girl. So at one point I was dating a girl at the tail end of this company failing. Um, and again, we just, we, we got ahead of ourselves. We made some bad decisions. We brought some bad, bad affiliates on board that, uh, were doing some shady stuff and we had to eventually close our doors because there was, you know, feds involved or whatever, but thank God, none of that money ever touched any of our accounts. And I just turned everything over and let it go. Um, for guys that want to try to do business with me in the future, um, I have a I, I have a very short fuse, and by short fuse I mean I have no fuse for that kind of stuff. Um, I'll use the f bomb in a. I'll try to finesse the this f bomb. I try to minimize them here on this on this uh, stream, but I always say that I don't commit financial fuckery, and that is a, that is a core value. Even before my red pill uh, transformation, when I got to the point where I defined my core values and my personal credo, um, that's always been one. Um, I come from a real good family, real good honest people, and even from a even when I was a little guy. Um, I don't, I don't financially fuck around with people, which is also a problem I'm dealing with now because, um, sometimes, uh, in my current point in my personal journey, um, I have times asking or uh, presenting the offer, uh, or getting paid what I'm actually worth. I'll put a lot of time and effort into something and then I'll sell myself short. And then the client's like, Oh my God, wow, that's amazing. And 
obviously they want to hire me again at the reduced rate. So that's something, uh, uh, I, again, guys, if you're working on any of these things in your life, join, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, entrepreneurs and cars.com forward slash, uh, community. That's where I share a lot of these ideas and kick these things around. Um, and for me, a thing that I'm focusing on this year in 2022, as we defined our stated goals for this new year, is that I'm going to overcome that mindset issue. And as you can see, as I progress in my transformation, I've transformed in multiple verticals of my life. Um, so it's, I already have the framework, I already have the knowledge, um, but that's something that um, that I carried on probably, again, going back to the low confidence from having been a former fat guy uh, that carried on into my adult life. But uh, again, these things are being taken care of. Um, so this photo, me playing baseball on the beach. I was, I was probably like 25, 26 years old uh, with the business. I had a girlfriend at one point I met in Miami um, and she came at some point to come and or we were going back and forth and she stayed with me in California for a bit. And then eventually as the business was failing, I realized that I needed to make some money back. We, we bankrupted the business and then personally I got pretty close, but I never filed. Um, I had to go through like a whole, the whole credit restoration and settlement process, which we'll cover that in a future topic. <laughs> There's a whole process there too. Um, and, and actually, and actually Rich Cooper on entrepreneurs and cars, I believe that was his first major success. Um, he's had on, he had had entrepreneurial uh, endeavors before, but I believe that was his first major success in the business world that, that started putting him on the map. I may be mistaken. So if I'm misspoken, uh, please forgive me, but I believe that's where he did it in the uh, uh, credit and debt settlement and uh, restoration industry. Um, so I had to get to that point and I sent her back um, I sent her from California out to Texas. Uh, it was a halfway point. We both had family there. Um, my dad's from California, but uh, in the 80s when California initially started getting bad, uh, probably even earlier for guys that, that, that know more than I do on the topic. Um, at some point, everyone, there's been multiple mi migrations of people leaving California. So, uh, so my folks did that in the... Um, in the eighties or so before they had me. And so I have family, I have family all over the South and in Texas. So I figured, okay, well she's from Columbia originally. Uh, I met her in Miami. She was staying with her brother and uh, she went, she was going to, we decided to send her to Houston. She could stay with her um, aunt and uncle. And then while I tie up all of my issues with the business, I was going to come out and join her at the end of the summer, um, get married. Cause there was, um, there was like a green card consideration there. So at the time I wasn't ready to get married, but I told her, I was like, I, was like, I liked her quite a bit. And I'm, I'm like, all right, you know what? We'll go ahead and move forward with this. Um, little did I know. So see this photo here. Um, you can see body language. She's, I'm, I'm kind of leaning in, but yeah. Well, no, look back. Yeah, I think I kind of took her by surprise with a kiss, but whatever. Uh, we we, po we posed for the selfie, so she knew it was coming. Um, so you see here, I was trying to grow a beard at the point, but I couldn't quite get it in fully um during my transformation I, I i had like a couple month kick where i studied how to do the beard and treat it and adjust your diet and all that so again these are all things that i was very deliberate about in changing my physique changing changing myself as a person and then eventually um for those who follow me uh, like the setting up like the dating profile your personal brand on instagram is crafting an image for yourself so this was the girl I eventually married prematurely, uh, which was fine. I, I think I think the original agreement was we were going to give it a trial run, and then it uh, so she could stay in the country. And then at the year mark, we would do the uh, religious wedding. So in Spanish societies, which I actually agree with how they do it, um, for those who want to get married, I don't advocate it now, obviously due to my experience, which we'll get into. But um, I advocate, uh, or I, I, I like how they do it in their culture, where they have the civil wedding, which no one really cares about. And then the religious wedding is where you make your vows in front of your community, your friends and family. And uh, essentially, traditionally marriage, the reason you do it in front of people is so that they can, they can one, be witness to the fact that you are entering this, um, this, new, this new arrangement moving forward to, for the formation of a future family. And then two, to hold you accountable to each other. Um, so there's eyes all around your, inner, your, your um, innermost circles of your inner circles. Um, so this was the girl I eventually married. You'll notice in this photo something really funny here. I believe this was taken, oh, I don't remember the year, but it was, it was, it was early summer because we were talking about doing some kind of travel. And then this girl, um, at, so previously until, until I got into, until I tried to improve my online dating presence and profile and all that stuff, I didn't really care about Instagram. I always had it, but I never used it. In fact, I took the opposite approach. I would tell a lot of people, oh, Instagram's so stupid. Uh, only idiots, only facetious people, only uh, arrogant narcissist people use things like Instagram. And then also, again, it's dealing with that, that former fat kid uh, self-belief of, well, why would anyone want to look at me? Um, that's something else I had to overcome my transformation. But why would anyone want to look at me? So I didn't take photos on Instagram myself. I had the account, but I never, ever logged into it. But at one point, for whatever reason, <clears throat> oh, pardon me, for whatever reason, I got in, I got in there. 
I got in there and on my feed, um, I, I won't ever out anyone I've ever dated or anyone I know or whatever. Um, I don't think this girl's on there anymore. She's married and has kids now, but, um, for whatever reason, I got in there and the next photo was a week after this photo, but you'll notice something really interesting. Uh, that guy is not me. Uh, and we, we are, we are already married at that point. Um, and then it turns out, uh, she had actually taken some money. I gave her to s settle down in Texas while, uh, she waited for me to come and join her from California after the demise of my company. Um, she took that money and invited a boyfriend, a pr previous ex-boyfriend from Columbia to join her in Miami for a, a weekend on, on my dime, a weekend of fun. And as it turns out, she actually had another guy in Houston who she is now, uh, married to. And, I always say if you if when you encounter these things, uh, you, you 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 reach out because this is how my transformation started. So you'll notice here she again it looks like she's pulling back a bit, but she was into me. She she went for the kiss. Um, after a while, I started kind of suspecting something was changing, and you'll see here like she's kind of there. Uh, she's probably texting one of her boyfriends at that point, but her face is kind of like yeah what yeah whatever and. Um, I believe after I had already seen this photo, of course I was beta and it took me forever and I tried to stay with her, but that, that relationship was already over for guys that are in the know, know that in this case, the relationship is over. You need to cut bait, pull the bandaid off fast rather than slow and get it over with. But I dragged it on for like a, I believe a year after this point until I finally filed for divorce because, uh, I called her out on this and she said, Oh, well, don't worry about it. It was an ex-boyfriend or it's an old photo or and the, the comment was great to see you again, like good old times or something like that. So, um, I wasn't too happy about that. And you'll notice, um, from this photo, which was just a couple weeks earlier, I kind of started falling apart for whatever reason. I shaved the beard, my face started getting fuller. And that's because at this time she was no longer, uh, habitating with me. She started pulling the, uh, well, I don't feel comfortable with you type conversations or I don't know the state of the relationship. Uh, I had a guy on our live stream last night talk about going to couples counseling. So I signed us up for couples counseling. Uh, of course, she never went because it was a me problem, not a we problem or ever a her problem. And that's and again, I'm not singling out this girl in particular. That's just how divorce works. That's how the system's designed. That's how the machine runs. And you're just and you're just raw product being put through this assembly line of a uh, an overweight alcoholic uh, guy going through a divorce uh, in my situation. So at this point I started drinking. Um, I believe I used it as a cope. Uh, I, I remember when I lived in Houston, yeah, I was drinking like 12, uh, I'd, I'd buy a 12 pack of beer. It was like six, seven bucks, whatever it was uh, plus tax. Um, and then I get two tall boys to top it off. And, and, and I've always had a really regimented routine. However, I had bad activities in the routine. I, I believe at like seven, eight, nine o'clock or so, whenever I finished with the day, I'd pop my first top and then uh, I'd do whatever I was doing and I'd, I'd throw them back with a certain cadence rhythmically. And then usually by like 1 or 2 a.m. I'd pat or at 12, I'd pop the tall boys. Uh, I was already kind of buzzed. I'd slow it down. And then by 1 or 2, I'd pass out. And But I was functional. I was able to wake up and go to work. But you can see in my face, it's starting to get fuller. Um, again, kind of like the photos when I, I, I mentioned when I was a kid were like uh, – uh, when my parents started splitting up, essentially I was reliving that same trauma. A lot of guys do this in our relationships, especially if you're the product of divorce or you're a son of a single mom, you will create that relationship pattern in your future relationships unless you make the deliberate decision to do something about it. And a lot of guys don't. And, and it's surprising when I say things like this, but that's absolutely uh, how it works. So you see my face getting a little fuller, getting a little fatter. Here, um, so she was gone. She was already gone. Uh, my now ex-wife was already gone at that point. And I, luckily I caught myself pretty quick since I had done the transformation before, since I had been fit before again, although I didn't really know exactly why I was doing what I was doing. Uh, I just knew that I wasn't going to eat bad and I was going to go to the gym every day. So I maintained the skinny fat before, but you can see, I started putting on weight again, uh, have the puffiness, uh, alcohol will make you retain water. So you get like real bloated and puffy. Um, and then I started putting on some adipose tissue again. My, my, my gut started getting a little bulge on it. Um, and I don't look, I don't look too sad here. I think at this point, I probably realized that the relationship was over. I'd likely already filed for divorce. And then I was, um, I had a couple of coworkers actually, and we had like a little gym, gym crew. So we would go, we would go to the gym at lunch and really that, um, that helped me out quite a bit. Um, if any of those, if any of those guys are listening, my, my, my Houston bros at the time, I was in a pretty bad place. And this is what good friends do. I've done this to one of my one of my good buddies from my childhood recently, where 
when you catch them in a bad place, you got to show them some tough love. So these guys at one point, we were on the road, uh, I think I had a speak engagement in like San Antonio or something nearby. So we just mobbed out there in a car together and got like a big hotel room together. And we, we were, we were, we were having, we had a good time. We were doing some drinking, but I think at one point the weekend was over and we were going into the work week and I was still doing it. And one morning they woke me up real early and it was, oh, the sun was just piercing my soul. And they're like, Hey, we're going to the gym. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you're done. Like we are not, we are not doing this anymore. And luckily these are the conversations I, I, I have with myself. Uh, even when I was 17 and decided to lose the hundred pounds, just you get to the point where enough is enough. I was done. I was not going to be fat. I was going to stop drinking. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. So I had a constant sinus infection. Um, turns out I had lived in Texas as a kid, but turns out my parents didn't tell me that as a kid, I had horrible allergies. So I did, went and did like an allergy panel and I was allergic to everything, like literally everything in bloom. Uh, the only thing I wasn't allergic to was like cockroach fe feces and like rat piss. Um, but anything in bloom, especially those of you guys that live in Houston or uh, any, probably anywhere in Texas for that matter, uh, when it's pollen season, it gets really, really bad if you have allergies. So I was puffy. I was just, I just didn't feel good. I wasn't comfortable in, in my own body. I was hot all the time. I was, uh, I was tired because I obviously, when you drink every night, you don't get a good quality of sleep. You'll sleep like your eyes will close and you're out, but you don't get restorative rest. Uh, there's a difference between those two things. So. Now, like guys that hang out with me when, when we do our meetups and retreats, like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll throw some back on the weekend. But as a general rule, I'm, I'm not a drinker. Um, I do enjoy fine whiskeys. So it's every now and then, like if I have a big, big steak dinner and I'm out with a girl or something, I'll, I'll, I'll get myself like a single old fashioned and sip it back just to, um, uh, what is it, a digestive, digestivo um, is what they call it in Spanish. So it's a digestive uh, just to kind of move everything along. So I, I, I was bloated. I was letting myself starting to go, although my, my buddies called me out on it. They dragged me to the gym and uh, I decided to do something about it. And since I had done a transformation before, the guys, the more the more you do physical transformations, whether it's like a bulk cut cycle or it's whatever you introduce into your fitness regimen, the quicker your body responds. It's almost like as a whole that your body is a muscle that responds to this new uh, stimulus that you're introducing or stimuli uh, when you approach the sleep, the diet, uh, the rest and the, the, the training aspect of it. Um, so I was able to drop pretty quick at this point. Uh, I, I'll start getting into the diet. So at this point, I believe I went on a keto diet. Um, I did a, Oh, you know what? I, when I was in California, I was vegan for three years, that through that three year lapse where there's no photos. So that might lead to like the kind of betatization uh, look in the face and maybe some of the puffiness. So I was vegan for a while. Um, I started coming into, I believe at this point, I was probably reading Return of Kings. I was listening to Donovan Sharp, and I believe I had already stumbled across Rich Cooper at this point. Um, so I was already with the with the inevitable depression and like the the drinking from the uh, from the divorce. I was in a bad place. So like a lot of guys, how they start their red pill journey, they're looking for answers. So about this point between this photo and this photo, I made the decision that I am going to start this transformation, that the divorce thing will never happen again. Uh, that being in the situation, like drinking and smoking, drinking 12, 12 beers and two tall boys to top it off. And then a pack of cigarettes a day minimum. Uh, those days were over. This will, this is not a part of me. It is not acceptable in my life and it, it, it will never, ever happen again. Um, so about this point between these two photos was when I stumbled across a red pill, but at some point I did hit a call. I, I got a call to action. So like, okay, we're done. We're moving forward. I started creating a new image for myself in my head. Um, I had a pretty clear visual of at one point me walking on the beach in California, just being completely ripped, completely jacked, just being happy and healthy in the sun. Um, walking around feeling good about myself and having a pretty girl on my arm. And we'll, we'll, we'll see that I'm a, I'm a big fan of visualization. So I will hold an image firmly in my head and I am, I'm motivated. I'll spring out of bed every day. Like, okay, because there's a plan. There's, there's, there's something I, there's an ideal I have to move towards, but there's also that element of disgust in myself that, okay, I am not at that point yet. And my, it, my new self-image, my new healthy or improved self-image does not match my current reality when I look in the mirror. And you'll see here, I've done videos on guys not posting selfies uh, for dating uh, photos. But when you're in the gym, I, I recommend you take a lot of selfies. Anytime you change your diet, anytime you do uh, make any kind of progress, maybe do it weekly, monthly, do it whatever. Um, when I'm in like a cut or a bulk cycle, it's at least once a week. Um, if 
I do things where I'm trying to, I think there was a time where I did like a cut from like 18% to 10% body fat. My first time getting a 10% body fat, which we'll get into here in a minute, um, where I did take photos every day just to see it go. And I actually created a weight loss tracker too and tracked the trend line and all that stuff to know, am I for sure on track? I was very deliberate about that because it, once more, when you, when you go from a higher double digit, uh, body fat percentages down to lower double digit. And by that, I mean like, uh, like 18, 19, 20% down to 10%. There's different considerations and different things you, you have to incorporate into your diet and training regimen to get to that level of leanness. Um, so we'll get into that. So at this point I went on, uh, keto, I believe I did a, um, a meat only diet for 30 days because I was coming off of veganism. Um, guys, uh, any veganism, vegetarianism, or any elimination diet diets in general, uh, that is a cult. It is a religion. They are unhealthy for you. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you look at my teeth, I have these nice little canine incisors here. That means that I am meant to eat meat. That doesn't mean that I'm meant to eat only meat, but my body specifically responds to a diet that is heavily based in meat with limited vegetables. Actually, the fiber fills me up and bloats me and gives me some like kind of gastric type issues. And, um, and then for me, if I want to bulk, carbs carbs will put weight on you, but it depends on the type of weight. So uh, in future videos, we'll get into like the macronutrient split. Um, I, I will share some of my macros, but I, I focus more on percentages. So is it a two to one carb to protein ratio? Is it a four to one carb to, carb to protein ratio? Skinnier guys probably need like a four to one carb to protein ratio or even higher. For me, to for me, I maintain pretty well um, at like a nice level of fullness and leanness, um, an acceptable compromise between the two to two to one uh, macro uh, macronutrition split. And then if I want to get really lean, it's it's uh, I'll go I'll go keto. I did keto before because you'll lose a lot of fat at the same time, but you're also kind of deflated in the gym. Uh, so for maintenance, I'll do like a one to one uh, carb to protein macro macro split and the, or a uh, one point five. Uh, carb to each uh, gram of protein. And then for fat, fat really depends. Um, for, on a keto-based diet, I ran a higher fat diet here. I was not on hormonal replacement therapy yet, which we'll get into. Um, at, a, at about this time, uh, I did go to an endo endocrinologist. I got all my bloods done and I had pretty low levels. I think I had like 270 or so, but that's an effect of smoking, drinking, not sleeping, being overweight, being depressed. Um, there's not a single thing that crushes your testosterone. Uh, well, there can be if you have like, a, like obvious underlying medical issues. And obesity will do that. But at this point, I wasn't obese. I just had a lot of bad uh, lifestyle habits that bit by bit led to uh, me being starting to get on that curve of, of becoming overweight again. So I, start, so I started doing keto um, at that point. I did a meat-only diet uh, in October of that year. Uh, and since then, usually in the month of October, I do a meat-only diet. Because coming into the holidays, I do relax my diet a bit and I do a power lifting type regimen so I don't put on too much fat. However, this time around, I was, eat I was eating quite a bit and uh, I screwed up my knee so I and I had COVID. So I took like almost a month out of the gym while still eating my normal power lifting diet that occurs between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, this year, I came home from uh, home to my hometown. Um, I came to where I grew up uh, from, uh, from where I live in Mexico. Uh, a little later, so about mid-December or so. So I'm, I'm actually only like three weeks in, and I, I just got back to the gym yesterday. I'm trying to rehab my knee and, uh, you know, getting everything going again. I'm still fighting off the congestion from the, the Dern virus. Um, so I was on, I was on the 30-day uh, meat-only diet here, carnivore diet. Um, I essentially had to just reset my system because – We'll get into this in, in other topics, but when, when you do elimination diets, there are things that are lacking from your diet that your body does need to fun function. For guys, you do need to have uh, fat in your diet, a healthy level of fat, and preferably animal fat for the proper natural, and I'll make this clear, natural uh, uh, production of, of testosterone. Um, at, so at this point, I had done my, uh, my initial blood labs. I had sent them over to my uh, HRT provider. And uh, I believe we started at first to work on uh, Clomid monocycle therapy to try to restart me. Then we did, uh, I believe, maybe an HCG monotherapy, a combination between Clomid and HCG. Um, and we tried that out for like a year or two, and I got higher. I went from like 270 to like 420, so there was a little bump, and I, and I lost, I lost the, the extra pudge uh, from drinking. I stopped drinking, stopped smoking, all that stuff. But I was still kind of low. Um, so at one point, when I was, when I was getting, I think I was like 29, I started a bit earlier, but when I was getting to like heading towards the age of 30, uh, my, my endocrinologist told me, he's like, Hey, if you want to just get on TRT, I I'd recommend it. You know, you've tried to do it the right way. You've been diligent with your diet. You're tracking everything. I checked in with him and, uh, and it doesn't look like you're going to restart naturally. 
I have a theory that that could be an effect of having been so obese or overweight as a kid, uh, but that's something that um, I probably need to get an expert to come on the panel and talk about, or that I'd have to look into and then actually present um, um, an educated uh, uh, thesis or a hypothesis there. Um, so here I was getting a little pudgy again, but um, I made the decision, I'm gonna, I'm gonna transform myself. And very quickly, um, the divorce was already going on. It was about over. For my first year, my lawyer told me, he's like, one, do not talk to your syndex to be ex-wife. And two, do not be parading around with other girls. So that year is pretty miserable. That was, that was me trying to lose the weight. Um, during the time between these two photos, I did get on TRT. I started, I started to get my diet under control. And, and again, it takes a while to dial these things in. But I was finally starting to track my macronutrition. I was starting to make correct food choices plan my menus and start to develop my eating philosophy and my fitness uh, training philosophy. And at this point too, when you stop drinking, smoking um, and doing all sorts of these external substances, your sleep cycle kind of starts to come together. I was still, I still had quite a bit of anxiety, but the gym was a fantastic outlet for that. And I talked to a guy earlier today. I'm going to start doing some musical elements in my channel too. If, for those that follow my Instagram, my personal one at Jaren Scott, J A R E N S C O T T. Again, that is at Jaren Scott, J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. -T. That's my personal Instagram. You'll see that I post uh, weekly and it'll, there'll be more frequent uh, guitar reels. That was just me. Uh, when I was a kid, I played music. I really liked it, but it, once more low self-esteem, never played for anyone, never let my family know that I was musically inclined. I'd hide away in my room, which is on the complete opposite end of a one-story ranch style home out in the country. And uh, I think they'd probably just guessed I was tinkering around, but I was actually playing and writing music and stuff. So, uh, during the pandemic, during the initial lockdowns in California, I actually picked back up the, uh, the, the guitar. So during this time, um, I had started in my transformation, I, I started naturally gravitating back towards music. I started collecting vinyl records and then restoring guitars. So I had a lot of free time. Uh, there was a year once more between this point and where I got the girlfriend, where it was me, my buddies at the gym. I think I did go out and drink on the weekends, but it wasn't habitual. It wasn't nightly anymore. I'd go and listen to live music. Um, in Texas, uh, there's a there's a large subculture of people that go like garage sailing or that go to estate sales, and you can find some really good deals. A lot of antique shops everywhere, especially in the rural areas. So I would go and buy and restore uh, guitars. So I did that to make some extra money to help finance my transformation and really give me something to do as the as the as I was, I was as I was working on myself through the divorce and accepting reality that. I was going to repeat the trauma that my parents placed upon me uh, when I was a kid. And again, not to blame either one of them. Um, I look back at my parents now that I, I am the age now that I was when my folks split when I was a little guy. Um, and I understand why I believe they were an effective society. So it's not the place any blame, but I was a product of divorce and I essentially repeated that cycle. So fast forward, I was starting to get happier, getting in the gym, um, a little full in the face. I carried, I, ca I carried quite a bit of mass in Houston. Uh, for those that, for those that live in Texas or have lived there or travel there or know anything about it, uh, it's really, really hot, especially in the summertime. And uh, there's not a lot to do outdoors. I'm a West Coast kid, so uh, I like topography. I like the ocean, beach, desert, mountain, whatever. I don't care. Um, lakes, uh, going on the river and doing some water sports. Well, in Texas, it's hot and it's really flat. Um, and especially in Houston, everything's far away. So hobbies consist of, and I joke with my buddies, uh, for the, those of you guys that are listening, uh, hobbies are consist of drinking, uh, bowling, movies, maybe live music, sporting events. There's a lot to do in Houston, but it's all, it's not drinking focused, but drinking is a big part of it. Whereas now I live in cities where there's cultural things, there's outdoor activities. I can go on nature walks and whatnot. Um, I, I, I do smoke weed occasionally, but I'm, I'm, I'm really off of that. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to lean on that too much. Um, although it does make me more musically creative. So, uh, so now my lifestyle is completely different. Um, I do have a drink occasionally. And if I'm on like a Miami weekend trip, I'll, I'll drink with my buddies, but I don't do shots. I don't take swigs from the bottle. I'll, I'll pour a whiskey and I'll just, I'll just sip on it all weekend. Um, so at this point I, I was, we're probably, yeah, it looks like we're at a live music venue. Um, there's one, uh, in Houston, I like to call Baker street that we went to like every Saturday and I started dating this girl. And this was at this point, I was probably like a year or two, maybe even three. No, it was, I was still probably pretty premature. I was going through my, I was going through the first step of my unplugging phase, which was the first one is where you start reading this stuff and you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. All women are terrible. I can't believe this. And you're pissed off and you're borderline black pilled and, and, Especially during that year, uh, this is when I launched Men's Shrine. Originally, it was a blog uh, during the time between these two photos. Uh, again, something else I could do to pass my time. And I started blogging about the experiences. But some of the original ones, um, people would comment and say that, oh, yeah, you're an incel. You're a black pill. You definitely sound, you definitely sound like, like someone who doesn't have it all together. 
uh, unfortunately, with the first rendition of that site, I host, I was I cheap, I cheapened out, and I hosted it with like a hosting company in India, and they went tits up, and I lost all of my original content. I didn't have a lot; I had maybe 50, 60, 70 articles because I was, I was blogging fairly regularly during that year period. Um, yeah, probably about that because I because I, I was doing one blog a week, a written blog post. Um, once more at that time, I, I was I was anonymous and. I didn't want to put my face out there or attach my name to anything because when you guys that are really new to this stuff and I have guys reach out to me all the time uh, that want to tell me their story that want to talk about things that want to talk next steps and they make it very clear they want to be anonymous. So when you're in the initial stages of this transformation process, when you're going into the unplugging and unchaining yourself from the unfortunate sad nature of our current society and reality, um, it is kind of embarrassing. Um, when I first went on TRT, I remember it took me like a month to tell this girlfriend. I, I, I told her I'd gotten it checked out, um, that I was that I was getting a diet together, and she was she was really supportive uh, at that time. This this was a fantastic relationship. Um, I probably wasn't ready for it, and then actually it ended because I got recruited to go back to California at one point, and she she didn't want to go. She was she was a good old Texas girl. She wanted to get married and settle down, have kids. Um, most of my long term monogamous relationships they have ended because the girl has cheated on me. When they cheat on me, they always cheat with two guys, and it's usually within the same week. Um, or it's because the girl wants to settle down and have kids like now and even now, especially now in my life, because uh, I've completely changed my dating philosophy and strategy. Um, but especially now in my life, there's so many things I'm working on and doing that marriage is it's just it's just not in the cards. But I do love female attention. So unfortunately for this girl, um, I came to that realization why we while we were dating. I never promised her marriage. I was very clear from the get go that like, hey, I just got divorced. I do not want to get married. And I'm trying to I'm trying to get get out of Texas, get back to California, and resume my life where it left off uh, before the the marriage and uh, uh, consequential uh, divorce. But th this was a good relationship, and I, and I show some photos with women. Again, I'm not going to out them or anything, but just showing photos to show my evolution of um, the quality or types of relationships I have. So I look a little happier here. She looks happy. This girl actually adored me, and I I, I adored her too. I had a really great relationship with her, and. Uh, it was a good healing relationship because I went from the ex-wife who essentially used me for a green card and then took off with other guys or whatever to a girl that actually liked me. And when I, I, was, I got into Rich Cooper's, I wasn't in his group yet, but I was listening to his channel and they started presenting terms like uh, genuine burning desire. And I remember the first time, not the first time I was ever with this girl, but there was, there was one night when I had that concept of genuine burning desire in my head. And at that time, I wasn't drinking or smoking or doing anything. I was, I was actually, I was, I was getting in shape. I was getting myself together. Um, and we, we spent the night together where in that moment, it was almost electrifying. Like, oh my God, this, this girl undeniably has genuine, genuine burning desire for me. Some of the previous girlfriends, like, uh, oh God, I went quite a bit back. She did too, but I was so young and just kind of not thinking about on any of those terms uh, because I was. 19 20 years old playing baseball in mexico um i had options and had girls looking at me all the time i was always on the road so i didn't think in terms of genuine burning desire whether she liked me or not um to be honest i didn't even care if she did or not but she was always by my side and looking back i remember i remember that relationship fondly so this girlfriend had, had a good relationship we just got to a crossroads in life where she wanted something different than i did those are actually always the toughest breakups like yeah it sucks being cheated on having your wife you know drag you to the divorce machine or rake you over the coals financially but it also sucks too when you're in a good relationship and you're it's just it's just you're just not on the same page but it requires maturity to get to that point um at this time i was heading uh, i was heading into uh, 30 or so i was already with red pill aware i was well on my way to the red pill journey i was blogging about it so i was familiar with these concepts and i knew uh, i did really care about this girl so i knew that she we were about the same age i knew that she was about the point of hitting the wall and she really wanted to settle down and get married. Uh, baby rabies, what guys in the, in the space call it. Uh, she, want, she wanted to settle down and get married. And, and that was not what I had in the plans at that point, which I obviously don't have in the plans now. Um, ooh, I screwed these up out of order. So after the keto, so I did the 30-day uh, meat-only diet. And then I stayed on keto till about Christmas time. And so I got kind of lean here. Um, I was working out in the, in the gym with my buddies. Um, at this point, I believe I was just starting TRT, possibly. We're still trying to dial in the dosage, um, which guys that are contemplating TRT, HRT, it's not the same as blasting steroid doses, like buying some some dirty vial from some random guy at the gym and picking up syringes off the floor and f injecting them. Uh, 
when it is medically guided hormone replacement therapy, they walk you through this step and they're very methodical about it to make sure that you stay within your biological ranges. At the point, at one point, the guy asked me, uh, it's like, well, do you want to be normal? It's like, cause you're normal now you're at 420 now after we tried to restart me uh, with more, uh, less exogenous hormone injection uh, techniques with the Clomid monocycle therapy and then uh, the HCG, HCG uh, attempt. And it got to the point where he asked me, he's like, do you want to be in range? You're in, you're in range technically. You're 420. Like technically you're in range if you're an 85 year old man, or do you want to be optimal? Um, I'm a smart person. So I chose optimal. Uh, normally I fall, I feel best uh, symptom wise. And a lot of times I go on uh, self-reporting symptoms uh, between the 900 to 1100 range. Um, the, on the high end, like I, I've popped at like 1150 before and like probably 1200 on the highest range. But that's not ideal for me because you start getting bloated and you start you um, when you have high levels of test, again, a portion of it converts to estrogen. So you have to take aromatase inhibitors. There's a debate in the space whether it's good or bad. I prefer to take as few substances as humanly possible. Uh, so I drop when I'm leaner, I can drop the aromatase inhibitor. Um, at this point, I didn't know that, but I, I did. I did drop some of the pudge. Um, I'd go out and drink with my buddies at this point. S same same guys that saved me uh, when we were in San Antonio. Uh, they became my best friends in Houston during the whole ordeal. I spent a lot of time with them uh, on the weekends. I was either with my girlfriend or I was out with the guys and uh, they were more conservative too. So these guys were all guys that had high school girlfriends that, um, that they eventually settled down and married with like early twenties, mid twenties. These guys had like houses and cars and all that stuff already. And they're still married. So um, it's a different cultural upbringing than uh, where I'm from. I'm from a conservative area, but it's in a liberal state. So obviously the decline was going to happen uh, quicker where, where I'm originally from, but I was, I was starting to get my stuff together. felt pretty good. Had, had, had a good social network, had friends. Um, the money I lost from my business, I was starting to get that back together. The whole reason to move to Texas was to get away from California, high cost of living and stack cash fast was, was my goal. Um, so at some point between then and here, uh, I eventually got recruited to go back and work in California. The previous girlfriend that relationship ended although she she made the drive out to california with me and then she came and visited me a couple of times so i think she was contemplating making that move with me but eventually we decided that that would not be the case um so went to california i started bulking up and actually i lied uh still living in texas i went to visit california i believe for a job interview because i was recruited out of houston back to california um and i was lifting with a buddy here so I was big in Houston. They called me, uh, they called me the bovine. So I was just figuring out my TRT dose. So obviously anytime you go from, when you go from 420 testosterone to, I was probably on the higher end, uh, even maybe even a bit o over what the ideal range is, like normal uh, physiological range, probably maybe even more like 1200 type here. So I was a little more bloated, but I also ate a lot. I was trying to put on size because um, in some of the previous photos where budgie here, well, I was uh, I wasn't skinny fat. I was, I was just pudgy. I didn't have any muscle mass. I was drinking every day, not lifting to the point where here I was lifting a little more. I got skinny, skinny for me. I have a bigger build. So uh, for me after doing the keto and then I, then I did a bulk. So I was just getting on TRT, started doing the bulk. I remember with this bulk in the future, uh, I'll, I'll do an episode where I break down uh, how to measure body fat percentages and then why it's important to introduce the same uh, measuring or test variables and then to do it consistently, especially if you have like 90 day transformation goals. Um, so, well, uh, I prefer DEXA scan. There's many ways to do it, but uh, we'll go and look at my DEXA scans and you'll see exactly what I was trying to do. But when I say this, According to the DEXA scan at the time, pre and post bulk, I'd put on, I believe, 15 pounds of lean muscle mass and then 15 pounds of fat. Um, and it's not all body fat because when you cut, it actually comes off quicker than, uh, than you realize. But when you're running higher carbohydrates, you're eating more. A lot of times, for especially for you skinnier guys that are trying to put on a lean muscle mass or just mass in general, it's a calorie question. So even for us bigger guys, you have to be in a caloric surplus to put on mass. And at that point, I was living in Houston. I, I, the divorce the divorce was uh, getting closer to finalization, had the girlfriend, had the good guy friends, uh, had a good social life, and things were starting to come together for me. And I'm a big advocate of momentum. So I was nowhere near where I wanted to be at this point, but I was moving in the right direction. I was already making these baby steps day by day, getting more into my transformation, learning more. Um, I still did it anonymously. It was my own little struggle that, that I dealt with personally, but the the vision was set in my head of who I was going to become and God damn it. I was going to do it. Um, so at this point I put on 15 pounds, uh, lean muscle mass and 15 pounds body fat. I do make the clarification that, uh, when you cut and I, and I track everything when I, when I do a cut or bulk, um, when I cut, I tracked it and actually ended up getting leaner faster than I thought I would. So a lot of that, uh, you guys will hear me use the term slop. 
Uh, slop is just all of the extra, it's the bloat, the extra carbohydrates, the spillover effects, the water under your skin that's an effective diet and a hormone or whatever your, your regimen is like. So guys that have bulked before know that like you get really big, but a lot of times that's not all lean muscle mass. When you cut, especially you're like, oh my God, I lost my gains. Well, no, you lost strength because you're not in a caloric surplus anymore. But if you do it correctly, you can actually, you can actually hold on to your gains. Um, what you're losing is slop. That's all of the extra stuff that's just hanging out uh, in your subcutaneous tissue or, or, or underneath your skin. So at this point, I looked sloppy, but I was not slobby. Uh, in terms of fat loss, when I say slobby, that means you have a mindset issue. That's, that's the guy like me when I was 15 at uh, nearing peak fatness or 17 at peak fatness where you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. But everyone's like, uh, hey, there's something wrong with you. And you saw in the photos, the girls I took to prom, just they, they, they wanted a free, they wanted a free date and took them out to dinner and got them there. And I, I drove pretty cool cars. Um, and uh, I, we no more than walked to the door. We took our photos and they, they completely ditched. Uh, so that is an effect of a slo uh, slobby mindset. And you look like a slob or a sloth. Um, at this point, I just had slop underneath the skin, but I was, I was intentionally going for a bulk here. Now I don't do the bulk and cut cycles because I've learned how to maintain to a relative degree year round. Like I'm going into a slight uh, caloric deficit coming into the new year, but really I just go back to maintenance and within two weeks maximum is my goal. Um, I'll have a six pack and I'll be photo ready. So my current baseline standard for myself um, is that I can deviate. I can have fun. I can go out of town. I can go backpacking or hiking. I can spend a couple of weeks with my family eating cookies and cheesecake and junk food and uh, having, having a glass of peanut butter whiskey after dinner and be fine. But within two weeks, by mid-January, um, I need to be back to where I'm at. And then I'll, uh, uh, for those who are in Rich's uh, private group, uh, the one percenters, uh, we're, we're doing a Nashville meetup first week of February. So by February, I have to be completely jacked because I'm working with guys in that group to get them jacked. And uh, I, I cannot be outdone. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding around, guys. I, I wish you all the best of luck. So here I was putting on, um, I was living in Houston, uh, bulking, and I visited a, I visited California to be recruited for a job. Um, I stayed with a buddy. We went to a gym. He snapped this photo. I probably didn't even realize he was doing it. And uh, just to show that, hey, like, you know, your arms are getting pretty big. You're getting just, just big. Um, my buddies in Houston call me bovine. I was just a big guy. I believe I was at 235, maybe not in this photo, but when I ended that cut, I normally end my cuts when I used to do bulk and cut cycles between 225 and 235. I'm roughly 5'11", a little more on a good day, a little less on a bad day, but I don't deviate by more than like a quarter, half an inch either way. Um, so, I'm, so I have a pretty big build. And, and even here, I'm not like fat, fat. Like you can't grab folds of fat and then, and then hold it. I, I was just big. I was holding a lot of water. Um, so here, at, so at one point, I believe, when did I get that job? It was like October, November of that year. Um, I made a goal after be, after living in Texas, going to California. You notice there's, diff there's differences in the se sexual market. And as a guy, if you're honest with yourself, you look around at your competition and you realize that, oh, okay, well, guys that girls are attracted to in Houston, like girls in Houston liked me at the bigger size. I was a big cuddly teddy bear and big, big, big burly man. And uh, in California, not so much. The type of girls I want to date in California, I realized this very quickly walking along the boardwalk. Um, so I still wasn't completely jacked yet, but I'd gotten to the point where I was at least living on a beach uh, at this time. So I, I was well on my way to that that idealized version that I that I created for myself in my head during the during during the divorce when I was still drinking. Um, so I realized really quickly going into a new sexual market in California that uh, I need to be on the leaner side, but also it's an outdoorsy type place, and just by nature of my lifestyle changing because when you live on the beach in a place that has uh, not necessarily perfect weather for everyone, but for me, perfect weather, like on a cold day, it's 72 degrees on a hot day. It's 77 degrees. If it gets to 82 degrees, uh, then it's, it, it's hot. Like people, they call it a heat wave. Uh, I was living in, in San Diego. Um, and then if it gets like 68 degrees at night, it does get cold in some nights, especially if you're inland. But it, when it gets like 68 degrees, like, Oh, bro, it's cold. So you become a weather snob pretty quick. That being said, I spent a lot of time outside. So just by nature of me being outside, I was already going to lose the weight. Um, I didn't do as much eating as in Houston because in, in, uh, in Houston, eating is a hobby and they have very good food. It's the most diverse city in the U.S. in terms of number of countries or cultures represented within the, uh, the city itself. Um, so there's so there's little little China, little Italy, little Tokyo. Li there's a little neighborhood for every country you can imagine in Houston. And 
cost of living is cheap uh, comparative to California or the West Coast, and my income was higher. Um, and then, and then the, the the tax burden wasn't as high. Obviously, as California, uh, almost no, almost nowhere is. So between this was October. This I uh, moved to California in November that year. And then I was coming up on my dirty 30. So, so for my dirty 30, I wanted to be jacked and I wanted to go to a music festival and just, it just looked real good. This was probably, I believe this was March time frame Cause I think I had this correlated with a weight tracker. Yeah. My, 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 my beard was fuller. So it's still, it's still winter time. So I was in my, I was in my first cut, like actual cut where I made the commitment to like, I'm going to get lean. Um, at this point, I don't remember what body fat percentage I was when I do the DEXA scan episode, um, subscribe to my channel or set the notifications uh, for, for new videos. And I'll get into the DEXA scan topic here shortly. And it'll literally break down my body fat composition. And it's also good too, for guys who are looking to create the perfect physique uh, as defined by the golden ratio, which is just the scientific uh, ratio between what is it? 1.62, correct me in the comments uh, to one. Uh, That is the, that is the like, universal standard for beauty you see this pattern uh formed in nature and in all sorts of shapes forms and sizes so for the human physique uh that is what you you want the ideal to be um i built a calculator for this too at one point when i launched my premium uh my premium group uh chat uh content all that stuff uh you guys will have access to that i also need to make sure that the calculations and conversions are correct it worked for me but when i start putting things out there i want to make sure just the academic nerdy side of me i want to make sure that it is absolutely uh correct and that people aren't following data that might be falsely generated because that would certainly not be a good thing for either of us. Now would it? Um, so got to California, October in this photo, uh, decided that I'm going to get down to being lean. I went on, Oh, who was the guy? The name, he was an Irish guy. His name is Mark McManus, I think. Uh, and he has a system called the total six pack ab system. So I bought that course. His philosophy was to do very, very, low volume and volume in terms of sets and repetitions when you start programming your training you absolutely do have to program your training as you're trying to get these things down now i'm at the point where i've i've done it so much that i just know i intuitively not walk in the gym and know what needs to be done to achieve the desire I, i need to achieve and i don't deviate too much anymore either so it's not really hard for me to go one way or another i don't do bulk cut cycles i'll do a leaner bulk uh, again, an effect of me being home for the holidays. I eat just a little more, but I, I train a lot heavier and harder and, you know, wear, wear long sleeves to the gym so no one can see the, 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 the pudge underneath or any of that. Um, so at this point, this is about March time frame. I was, tr- I was getting jacked for Coachella. I wanted to go into my dirty 30, feeling pretty good. Um, I made out to California. I was making well into the six figures at the time, lived in an awesome place, drove a sports car. Um, at about this point is when I started dating multiple women. Um, I, that, I, I just made that, that, that is the way I decided to do things. Uh, guys that are new to doing that. Um, I wasn't completely honest with them at first, which caused, it caused a little more drama, uh, in, more internal, uh, within myself than externally of trying to manage, uh, those relationships and make sure they don't find out about each other. Oh, well, where are you this weekend? Or why weren't you here? Why? So I didn't like that stuff. Eventually now I'm very open about it. Um, anyone who dates me knows that you're actually, my, my main girls are probably listening in there. They're, 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 they're all lovely. Everyone knows that that's how I structure my life. Um, so at this point, and you can, you can see a good point is I was starting to get leaner here. You can see the, the chest separation. You could see, um, I think I probably got a little leaner before that Coachella, but, uh, cause I was a little fuller too. Um, I, was, I was eating more carbs. So, um, Oh, you know what? No, what I was doing here, I was doing uh, flexible dieting and I was doing cyclical carb cycling for you guys who are more advanced uh, in the in your fitness journey. And then I did uh, strategic refeeds. At this point, I was doing a pretty heavy deficit during the week. Um, so I believe I'd calculated that I needed, uh, at this point, I think I was eating 3,300 to 3,500 calories a day. Um, again, being, uh, ending my bulk at 225, 235, being 511 roughly. Um, and in the future, I'll present these calculators. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. At this point, I was, um, I probably wasn't at my peak leanness yet at this point. I looked a little fuller, um, had the fuller beard, but I was getting into new territory. I had never been that lean in my life. And it, to be honest, guys, it feels really good being lean. Not only does it feel good confidence wise, when you walk around and girls eyes literally pop out of their head or they have a boyfriend who's oblivious, like I was during that whole divorce. He's oblivious, got his girlfriend's hand, and she turns her whole body to look at you. That is, it is a confidence boost that cannot be quantified until you absolutely personally experience it. So, uh, guys, I, I, I know there's a lot of guys. There's different training philosophies, and I totally get it. You do you, but there's a lot of guys that say, okay, I'm, I'm more, I'm more of a power lifter. Or, 
Um, I just want to be big, uh, gains, bro, gains, gains, gains. But I think it is worth it for every guy in their life to get down to 10% body fat or leaner at one point, just to show yourself one, you can do it Two, to see how your body responds uh, because uh, processes and the way you feel actually changes and your mind changes too. When you start getting leaner, there's different metabolic and biological considerations and consequences when you start getting leaner um, to the converse, when, when you're obese, obviously it is one of the, it is the most unhealthiest thing you could do aside from drinking, smoking, using substances. It falls for me in that category of um, it is a substance abuse and it's a food addiction. But on the other end, when you start getting the stuff down, your body starts making changes that you didn't realize were possible. You feel good. Um, I remember there was a time in my life where I didn't know what the word well-being meant. And it wasn't, it's about this point where I started understanding that feel good energy that courses through your veins. This is what well-being is. And at this point, I decided this is my standard. I'm going to maintain this for as long as I can. For those of you who follow the Men's Shrine blog, uh, the written blog, and on my YouTube channel too, one of my first videos I upload, and it's one that's most popular, um, there's a comprehensive guide on how to cut uh, using a, a classical bodybuilding stack, which is ephedrine, caffeine, and aspirin. A lot of my training comes from the classics. Um, a site that I like a lot is johndobodybuilding.com. Uh, the guy, the, the guy's way more advanced than what, what I choose to be or maintain, but I get, I got a lot of good wisdom from his stuff. Like for example, the whole idea that you don't need to do like crazy bulk and cut cycles. You don't need to jab a bunch of steroids into yourself with therapeutic doses and relatively small doses of supplementation and just doing the things right and being disciplined and doing it consistently. You can build a pretty nice physique. Um, so for me, when it comes to my supplementation or dosing of anything, I do a minimally viable dose that is where I can get the absolute maximum effects for the minimum potential future harm to my body. Of course, it's all a risk mitigation and assessment that you have to do. Uh, obviously, uh, being on TRT is less bad for you than being 100 pounds overweight and an alcoholic. Uh, so anyone that says, that, oh, well, you know, it might not be that good for you in the long run. Yes, that's true. But smoking a pack of cigarettes and drinking 12 beers and then topping off with two tall boys is also not good for you either. So I would rather take this risk to feel good, look good, have confidence, have a sharp mind. Um, although I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired right now. I'm stumbling a bit, uh, and just really have everything all together. That is a risk that I decided that I will take, and then I will maintain this moving forward. So at this point, I did do um, ephedrine uh, during in my cut. I have a comprehensive article on menshrine.com or here on the YouTube channel. If you look in some of the original videos that I posted about a year, year and a half ago, um, I break, I break down exactly how to do that. Now I don't use stimulants. Um, I drink coffee every now and then. I've got a diet Dr. Pepper now, but I don't like jamming stimulants into my body. It gives me anxiety and um, it affects my performance in the gym. When my pulse is too high, my heart's going too fast. I don't like it. I know there's actually a decline in my personal performance. Uh, now when I go into the gym, it's more meditative. I already I know exactly what needs to be done. I don't even have to think about it. It's like waking up, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, taking a shit. Like you, you just go to the gym and you train. Uh, that's where I'm at now. So I don't need ephedrine anymore. Um, and we'll also get into uh, – there's something else I added to my regimen, and I, and I did the risk-reward uh, calculation there too uh, here, here in the future. So at this point, I was on – I had my TRT dose dialed in. Um, I have a relatively low dose. At this point, I believe it was 160 milligrams a week split between uh, two doses, one every 3.5 days. I think I was on a low DHEA dose and then uh, still taking the aromatase inhibitor. And this cut, I, I did it with the ephedrine. So um, I was able to maintain fullness and the ephedrine is a stimulant. So, so it does, it speeds everything up. And also I don't want neurological issues, heart issues or any of that stuff in the future. Um, what I'm currently on could potentially cause those issues. It is a much lesser risk than someone who takes, for example, ephedrine or speed or God meth or something that really just, just gets you amped up and going. Oh, these photos are out of order. Oh, nope. Uh, so these are these are the girls I started dating. So this was about the time I was going to Coachella. At this point, actually, I was living in Colombia or I was living in California, but I went. I started going to Mexico a lot. I'd lived in Mexico before. So this was one of the Mexican girls I was dating. Um, she still comes around every now and then. She's she's about my age, and she'll go and try to get into a relationship. And I say this like a lot of my girls do this. They'll they'll disappear, rightfully so. They know they they know very clearly. I don't want to get married. That's not the plan. There's no kids in the cards, at least at this point, if ever. Um, so they'll venture away, and then when that inevitably doesn't work out, they'll, they'll come right back. So, so this girl and I, um, like like a lot a lot of girls I've been dating, um, there's a couple that I've been dating consistently. That you know, whenever we're in the same town, or um, when I'm in Mexico City, they'll come visit me um, to a 
fairly high degree of regularity. And then there's others that they'll, that, that they'll come and go. So, so, so this one, ones I started dating, um, I like Colombian girls. I like Venezuelan girls and I like Brazilian girls for whatever reason. Mexican women are beautiful too. Um, I feel probably most at home in a relationship, uh, multiple relationships uh, with Mexican women, just because I've lived there more than other places. But attraction wise, I like Colombian women, Venezuelan women and Brazilian women. Uh, that's just my preference. However, I do make the note because guys will ask me like, oh, do you ever date black women or Indian women or women from this country or this culture, ethnicity, background, race? Um, there are beautiful women from every background. A beautiful woman is a beautiful woman is what I always say. However, my personal preference, and that's this is looking back, it seems that I gravitate more towards women of these backgrounds and also conversely that these women seem to like me more um obviously in the case of my marriage there was uh, alternative motivations uh it is what it is but now i've noticed that when i go like uh like this girl's from medellin so i think we went down there to, to to visit her folks or her family when we were in medellin um looking around like okay not only do i like these girls i'm very attracted to them but they like me uh, which is where you want to be in your dating life you want to date girls that want to date you it's really simple a lot of guys don't seem to get it but that is the way it is so uh dated this girl we were down in medellin um obviously i think at one point she wanted to go back to columbia she didn't want to stay in the u.s uh there's a misnomer that all people in Latin America want to come to the U.S. and stay here illegally or make a life here. A lot of people don't. Uh, there's economic opportunity. The same reason I moved to Texas was to stack cash fast. Uh, I love Texans. I'm originally from there. I was born there, lived there till I was like eight years old. So my parents split. But for me, I just didn't enjoy my lifestyle living there. So I spent the year that I was in Texas or I was there a couple of years. But once once the divorce started kicking off, I spent that next year planning to get out of Texas and, and start creating this lifestyle. And I don't know where this was. I'm a little bloated there. We were in Columbia, so I probably went out drinking or something the night before. I hadn't completely, completely, completely cut out drinking at that point. And, and again, I, I still go out and I'll have a drink every now and then. I had like one or two cocktails for New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a whiskey drinker, so that's what I was doing. But, but uh, I don't know if it's an effect of being a formal fat guy or being on the TRT. I don't run a very high TRT dose. And, and actually, as I get older, I'm bringing it down because it reduces the bloat. But I do, I do hold water under my skin. I do have a tendency to bloat. So I look a little bloated here, but... This girl does too. I, I wanted to put a picture of us together, but photos of her by herself. She was she's actually really cute. So has you know real real nice features and it's angles and lighting too. Um, but this photo was roughly the same time frame as as this one. Um, I started started dating my girls. Um, this was roughly the same time too, about Coachella time. Probably not as far into that first uh, that first big cut, um, but I, I had more fullness here. So. Uh, I think I went slower on that cut. I started, I started after Christmas holidays, started in January and I gave myself to March 31st. So that was a three month cut. Um, again, coming out of that bulk cycle, I only had 15 pounds to lose. So over the course of what, like, let's just say 12 weeks, 12 to 15 weeks, I'd lose 15 pounds. A lot of that was water. A lot of that comes off immediately once you start cleaning up the diet following the bulk. So I didn't have a lot of weight to lose. I went at a real slow pace because I didn't want to lose my gains that I had put on uh, in Houston because I, I ate a lot in Houston, so I wanted to get something out of it. And uh, so I look a little fuller there. At this photo, for comparison, so I eventually made it to Coachella, had a great time, went out with a bunch of buddies. And um, for my Dirty 30, actually, a lot of my friends surprised me. I had groups of friends from Mexico, groups of friends from Washington State, where uh, I grew up and spent my teenage years. Uh, groups of friends from Texas, my new Houston friends, and then groups, a uh, group of friends from California. So we got like 12 camping spots next to each other, somehow managed to get the cars more or less lined up and then get in and hold them like with tents or whatever and have them reserved. And then I had a block of friends from multiple chapters of my life together, which was an awesome way to start my, uh, my, my dirty 30, uh, to enter my thirties. Um, especially being red pill, um, or getting more into red pill coming into 30, I thought that, okay, well, if women hit the wall, what if I hit the wall? What if my dating life's over? What if my game is going to be drastically decreased by nature of me hitting this milestone age of 30? Uh, for men, it's actually the complete opposite, especially if you get your stuff together by 30. I always jokingly say, but it is true. For me, by 30, um, I knew who I was. Um, I consider myself an adult. I am responsible for my life, my actions, and I have uh, and I have a personal credo that I follow. So by 30, this is all put together. And you see the difference here. This is just a couple of years. Uh, so this photo here on the left, I was probably 27, maybe 28 years old uh, going through the, the the time of the divorce. And on the right hand side, um, I labeled it that I was 30. I don't recall what day this is taking. My birthday always falls over the weekend of Coachella. There's two weekends now and then stagecoach is usually the following weekend. And so I usually go to one weekend of Coachella, one weekend of stagecoach prior to lockdowns and all that. And then more recently, I started just going to stagecoach. But that's because the demographics started changing. Um, 
people that go to Coachella or people that don't necessarily like being around um, guys that have followed me for a while know that um, I have a Marine brother who's a wounded vet. So I took him to a music festival one year uh, to Coachella and these assholes from LA, these, these kids, they essentially harassed him the entire time, which is the most messed up thing you could do to a wounded veteran. So I will probably never go to Coachella again. I still love music festivals. I do appreciate acts from that genre of music. Um, and coming into this year, um, I'll, I'll probably go to more music festivals abroad, Latin America, Europe, uh, places like that. But this is my first real, real music festival. I've always liked live music. I go to any concert, whether the band's good or bad, I could care less. I will go. I will support them. A lot of concerts I go to, so I'm, like, I'm like one of three people there, aside from like the guitarist mom or the, uh, or the, or the, the marketing manager. Um, but I enjoy live music. So this is my first music festival, music festival. Had that full experience. I know a lot of people do it younger, but in my early 20s, I lived in Mexico. In mid-20s, I was trying to build a business. And in late 20s, I was going through a divorce in the initial stage of my transformation. So I was a little old to go to Coachella. I was 30, and I thought, oh, no, I'm going to be 30 at a music festival with all these kids. It's going to suck. Uh, nope, that image I had in my head of living on the beach, being jacked, uh, feeling good about myself, walking around Coachella with my shirt off at 30 years old looking like this. I had 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old 20, 21 girls probably drunk on drugs, whatever. It's just, it's just the nature of music festival environment They would come up and like literally pull their bikini tops up and just rub their bare tits against me. So, uh, going from this guy on the left, uh, this was probably a year and a half, two years prior, uh, to this relatively quick transformation. I broke it into multiple phases, but going from my, my, my green card seeking wife, uh, cheating on me with two guys and then, and then taking off and making me think I was crazy or trying to couples therapy or all that stuff to uh, being in pretty good shape, feeling pretty good, pre feeling pretty good about myself. You can, see, you can see my evolution in my voice as I talk, like when I get into sad topics and feel like, oh yeah, oh no. And now I'm leaning back, like pretty proud. Like, yeah, I was, I was looking pretty good. I had, a, I had a good week in there. I came into my dirty 30. When I go to music festivals, I always set music festival goals. And there's usually, there's a lot of camping spots. So people that have like adjacent campsites, a lot of girls will ask you, or um, guys that need like conversation starters, especially if you're in the music festival environment, ask them, what are your music festival goals? And I always tell girls in music festivals, um, again, everyone knows I date multiple women. That's not, not any kind of secret. Um, music festival goals are to have a new romance, at least one per day. But then I make the, uh, um, I add that, but that takes a lot of time, work and effort. And I'm really here for the music and to enjoy myself. So my music festival goals are to either have a new woman every day minimum or to have a weekend long romance. Like, do you want to be my girlfriend for the weekend? Um, I've gone both ways at music festivals. I prefer to have the weekend romance. Um, I believe this weekend, uh, that weekend. No, there's a girl that welcomed me in my dirty 30. That's a different story for the future. Uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was, actually no, I'll tell it now. I was sitting on like a little, uh, like one of those big, like uh, uh, one of those big wooden wheels that use like spool cable, like on construction sites. It was flipped over for like a power bank at our campsite, uh, like long after the festival had ended. So it's probably like the wee hours in the morning. And oh no, um, God, lied again. Coming into midnight, um, I walked away from the campsite I was sitting on that pinwheel and just kind of thinking to myself, like, okay, the 30, the 30s counting down and I'm real introspective and I can be real int uh, 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 introverted too. So a lot of times um, I spend a lot of time by myself, just conversing with myself, having, uh, analyzing myself. And then really at this point, um, I tell guys that I coach that uh, you need to become your own best friend. And at this point I was already my own best friend. I started liking myself, which is really nice. Uh, when, Cause you have to live with yourself guys. Like, and if you're your own worst enemy, if you're getting in your own way, if you're if if you're constantly trying to sabotage yourself, that's a really shitty way to live. So at this point, I I started liking myself. Um, I started being friends with myself. My inner dialogue was positive. It was it was um, collaborative, not combative. And and then these things, once you start to internalize that, you start to embody these things, put them out in the external world. So about this time, I was starting to really I was starting to really like myself, and I had a good weekend. So I was sitting on this pinwheel uh introspecting uh well dirty 30s my dating line be over and this girl comes over and she's like hi like la girl like uh, hi like what are you doing and i'm like eh, you know i'm actually turning 30 here in a couple minutes just letting it count down and, th and there are some real cool girls in california like i'm kind of an out there guy when we're getting like more spiritual spiritual topics or things like that but like i am a west coast kid so like i do buy into some of that stuff or i've made it a part of myself so she's like hey you know it'd be really cool um i can't do her accent but it'd, it'd be really cool um for your dirty 30 she's like let's do this um she, she said she said i'm the type of person that um i i want people to remember me forever she's like so let's do this for your dirty 30 like i'm not gonna tell you my name i'm not gonna do anything but if you come in my tent it's like what well, uh pg i have party favors for you and then you and then let's spend the night together and 
we we will we will we will kick off your new decade of life uh, together, and it'll be uh, it'll be a story you'll remember forever. Which it is because um, I'm telling the story right now. I've told the story multiple times, and the way I, I live my life when I'm going through crap moments, in the moment, I'll tell myself, okay, how can I make this a good story? Um, guys, I know you, I know a lot of guys in Rich's group have reached out to me like, how do you tell good stories to girls? How do you become a storyteller? When you're in the moment, you need to be crafting the story. You don't have to have all the details, but look around. Okay, um, this is that. Uh, this is over there, and then start making observations. Start making little anecdotes, little little kind of quirky, witty things. Uh, so, so this girl, like, she was speaking my language. It was like, you know what? Let's let's make a really good story together to kick off your dirty thirty uh, for a night that you'll you'll remember forever. And and I do. Um, never met the girl's name. She was. She, she was, I don't know, hipster, hippie type. I'm not into like the California alternative fashion. She, she looked like a hot female version of Tom Petty with like the top hat and whatever, whatever his get up was. Here's me um, probably about the time that I went to that music festival uh, going in a tanning bed, but the, the lighting's real good to see like some of the, the definition, the fullness um, separation. Now I maintain myself. I don't have as much fullness, but I usually have more definition. Um, and again, there's reasons for that. So at one point, um, yeah, these photos got out of order during the, this cut. So at one point, I think I continued cutting. I tried to I tried to get well below 10% doing the ephedrine, so I had more caloric restriction. And I think my macro ratio probably got off. I probably went too low carb to where I was flat. But at this point, I started feeling skinny. Um, there's, there's still good definition, but I didn't like my body at this point. Um, I, I like being cut up and shredded, but I wanted to maintain some fullness too. So as I continued progressing through this tail end uh, leading up to where I'm at now in my, in my, my fitness transformation journey, um, I, had to, I had to figure that out. Okay, how do I maintain leanness and fullness? And usually, usually it's like one or the other. Um, it's one of those games that guys play. Um, uh, oh, what, what, what do I say? Um, do you want to be lean, big, or natural? Pick two. So it's one of those things. Um, since I'm on TRT, obviously, I, I don't have to worry about my levels fluctuating or anything. So that creates a nice baseline upon which you just need to dial in your diet and additional supplementation. And now I don't do any supplements. I don't even do creatine. I'll do like a multivitamin. And I have my vitamin and uh, mineral regimen down. Um, but I don't do any like creatine, uh, night, uh, NOS blast or any, any of that kind of stuff anymore. Because uh, I, I really, I just want to age gracefully is my new goal right now and just maintain. But at this point, I was, I was, I think I got a little too lean for my, for my own liking. Um, yeah, I was already in California at this point, got lean at one point we got locked down for COVID. Uh, they closed down everything, including our gyms. And at some point our beach is there. So, um, realizing what was going on, I went and got a cheap little apartment on the beach in Tijuana, which is like a 15, 20 minute drive for me getting into Mexico. Uh, coming back, actually, there was no line, which is unheard of for those of you that know that Tijuana, San Diego border, because, for the longest time, I think recently they lifted the restriction that Mexican nationals could not cross a land border uh, during the initial like year or two of, of the lockdown. So there was there's no there's no one crossing that border, which is fantastic uh, because I didn't have to wait in line. So it's probably 15, 20 minutes either way. I preferred to spend my time uh, in Mexico. Um, a lot of people laugh when I say this, but Mexico is a freer country than the U.S. In the U.S., we are no police state. Uh, every aspect of your life is regulated by the government. So I've always been happier in Mexico. I knew this when I was younger and now it is undeniably true. Um, technically Mexico still has a socialist president. Technically they have more, I guess, more federal involvement in people's lives, but the way in which that culture backs up that infrastructure, uh, people just kind of leave you alone. Like, yeah, you'll come across a corrupt cop every now and then I hear stories from, from gringo travelers all the time. Um, I've never had those situations. I've had interactions with Mexican police and they'll, but they're always, they're always super, they're, they're always, they've always been super cool. Even when I was younger, I've never even had to pay a bribe in Mexico. The only bribe I paid in Latin America was, um, was Costa Rica, which is like one of the more democratic, uh, I guess more first world leaning, or at least they think they're first world and they charge European prices actually, uh, in Costa Rica. That's the only place I actually had to pay a bribe. And that's just, and, the, and it took some convincing, uh, like I got a speeding ticket, just, you know, whatever local infraction. I literally just told you like, Hey, I'm leaving tomorrow. Like I'm flying out of the country and I, I'd hate to never be able to come back to Costa Rica because I have like a $20 speeding ticket. Uh, so we'll do this. Here's, here's the $20 and then I'll give it to the ticket for you to take to the courthouse and pay on my behalf. Let's do that. And then the guy's like, Oh yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Which it's a bribe. He'd probably just ripped up the ticket. Um, so at this point I, I was a little bigger Locked down during COVID, a uh, little, little bloated, uh, living in Mexico. I think, I think they closed their gyms at some point too. I was going, but I fell into the whole, um, the whole mindset during the initial lockdowns of like, oh, you know, it's 
hey, it's because of this issue that I don't have to go to the gym or, oh, I can be lazy. And I, I've noticed that now, now that we're at the point where we know what happened, I'll just leave it at that. I not get too controversial because that's not the point of this, uh, this particular stream. Uh, but we all know what really happened. Like the, the, the wool is starting to be lifted from in front of our face and, and we're starting, regular people are starting to see the light. Uh, people like me that are red pill or like guys in riches group. We knew this stuff from like two weeks before it even landed stateside, exactly what was going to happen. Um, and that things, the sequence of events that were going to occur, guys that are smart know these things. You can, you can use your eyes, connect them to your brain and see like, okay, this is what's going to happen. So like, Oh, there's lockdowns and everyone's lazy and people are, people are drinking and, uh, families that are normally split up because dad's at work while mom's at home or vice versa. Uh, now they're together. So domestic violence went up, divorce went up, all sorts of crazy societal secondary problems occurred. And we knew the riots were going to happen in California. Every, every smart person knew that. Um, so at this point I was down in Mexico. Um, I saw the writing on the wall, knew it was going to, going to come. Um, I am, I am American cultured, um, probably due to my upbringing, but I, I believe in freedom. And if that means not being in the land of the free, which is very ironic if you live in the U.S., it is not the land of the free. It is a police state. Um, and it's bordering on the edge of communism, not quite like Canada, but it's getting there. Uh, Mexico is actually pretty high on the, uh, I believe, on the freedom index. Um, a guy I like to follow for those sorts of conversations is uh, look up Nomad Capitalist on, on YouTube. And he does, he goes in quite a bit uh, in why Mexico is great. I actually came across him after I was already living in Mexico again. Um, and he talks about why Mexico City is the city of choice for a lot of ex expatriates. It checks a lot of awesome things off of a checklist that are required to have an overall good quality of life in various uh, verticals of your life. So um, I got the apartment uh, in Tijuana. Uh, I think I, it was really cheap. I think I was paying like 500 bucks a month for it. My place in San Diego is like 2,800 bucks a month. So, uh, so at that point, I knew that I was not going to stay in California for much longer. I, eventually that summer, um, this is actually just last summer. I, I lost I lost my job at some point uh, last year and saw the right on the wall that I will not be living in California anymore. I will remove everything from California. No bank accounts, no ties, no cars, no registration, no licenses, any of that stuff because their franchise tax board in California will come after you and they will take your money from you, whether you know about it or not. They'll usually just let you know, oh, as a courtesy, uh, by the way, that money missing from your bank account, we took it from you. So um, I was done with California, which is unfortunate. I, 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 I love my lifestyle in California. And the people are nowhere near as high quality as Texas people. Um, and that anyone who's lived in both States will say that that's not, it's not a judgment call. It's just the way it is. Like there's higher caliber people in certain States and guys, you can guess which color uh, those States predominantly lean uh, when it comes to like political, cultural type issues, um, and just higher quality people in general. Um, so I knew I was going to go to Mexico. Um, I was in the TJ apartment at this point, a little bigger, um, I think I, I eventually found an underground gym on the San Diego side. And then uh, there's underground gyms all over Mexico too. So I started training again, but I, I, I did put on some fat during the initial COVID stages. Um, I hadn't smoked marijuana since like high school. I started smoking quite a bit of weed and I still do every now and then. Um, I prefer it to drinking uh, because it's much healthier for you. Depends on the way in which you, you ingest it. But uh, there, there are different considerations there. I can get in those to those topics at some point, but uh I'm actually not leaning on that as a substance as much anymore. I use it for creative pursuits, like playing music uh, or writing, transcribing, composing music. But that's really about it. Um, I, during COVID, I was bored, <laughs> just smoking weed and eating. I wasn't drinking anymore at that point. So, like, what are you going to do? They closed our beaches, which that's awesome. That, that is a sin in the state of California, to close the beaches when it's perfect, sunny, sunny weather all summer long. It's very easy to social distance. So at that point, I'd had it with California. And I'd already left before to go to Texas and make money. And yeah, this is me <laughs> going to the underground gym. I was driving a, a little, an old Porsche Boxster Type S convertible. And, uh, and I'd cruise down the highway with the top down. So you see like the multiple, like there's multiple layers of sunburn. I had like the seatbelt tan line across me from the convertible. And the little white part of my lower abs is my, my I, got, I got pudgy again. I have a tendency to get pudgy. Um, I don't look like this now. I'm, I'm leaner than that now. So I must have really done some eating and smoking during the, uh, the initial phase of the, uh, the lockdown in California. But the cool thing is, I think this was May timeframe of last summer. Um, so I started my, and this was my last bulk and cut cycle. So I, I did do a bulk um, just to pass the time, spent a lot of hours in the gym like I did during my Texas bulk and during my initial college bulk when I was, uh, after I lost all my weight, um, I was kind of skinny fat, uh, went to Mexico, got the trainers, nutritionists, all that. So this was probably my third actual like bulk bulk um, that I did. And, and this was about May timeframe, but I'd already cut a few times before. I'd already been like 
I believe I was eight, nine percent body fat when I went to that first uh, music festival that I showed you a couple uh, photos before. And uh, I knew how to cut pretty fast. So between May, uh, I started uh, about this time, I started cutting again pretty late. Like normally, you want, normally I like being ripped uh, before April comes around when I'm still doing bulk and cut cycles. Now I just maintain I'm always two weeks, uh, I'm always two weeks away from optimum leanness or for what I like to have my baseline. Um, well, this is probably more of my baseline. It's more easy. It, it's easier to maintain just a little bit of extra body weight. But I went from this May photo to, I believe this was September, October timeframe. So I was cutting through most of the summer. It wasn't an aggressive cut. Eventually they opened the beaches back up. And since they closed all the parking lots, we couldn't get tourists uh, out on the beach. I had this entire big, beautiful boardwalk entirely to myself. So I was able to live my California dream. And even I took it to the next level once they, once they uh, unlocked the beaches for us that there were no tourists coming in. So for guys that like beaches and don't like crowds, that was perfect for me. So I had a virgin beach, more or less. My, my neighbors would all come out. Um, a lot of these houses in the background, they're longer term vacation rentals. And during the initial stages of COVID, people didn't really know what to expect. They, everyone got kind of kind of scared to travel. No one was making any really big life decisions or moves or in, in, uh, indulging in any luxuries like travel to San Diego, for example. So a lot of these houses were vacant. And at times the homeowners or property owners would come and check them out. Most of them are managed by uh, like rental property companies or um, uh, like, like actual like 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 legit real estate companies, but there'd, there'd be people that come up. There wasn't a lot of population. It was me and just a handful of neighbors that were longer term tenants. I believe if I'm not mistaken, the zoning there, it was something like for every X amount of units that you're Airbnb and there had to be like at least a like actual longer term leaseholder. So I fell into one of those. There was like me and maybe two other neighbors in my building. And that's probably, that's probably about the same for all the other buildings and little beach houses around here. So not a lot of people. I had a good time. Um, I went out with one of my neighbors, um, yeah, another girl I started dating on the regular Venezuelan girl. Again, I like Colombians, Venezuelans can't help it. Uh, she told me that, Oh, I'm a, I'm a photographer by trade, but obviously she wasn't working. She wasn't doing wedding photos or any of that kind of stuff. So one day I think we were uh, guys that watched my um, tender to Instagram breakdown uh, of the in, of the inbound lead generation funnel. Uh, you'll, you'll see that I went in and showed you like the actual, like the 300 photos, including the B roll of this photo session. But this is my first photo session. So about this time I was living with, I rented out an extra bedroom to a uh, Southern California surfer kid and hanging out with him over the summer. Um, he, he was a drinker. I was a smoker, but I'd smoke and I'd play good. I was playing guitar again. I'd smoke and play guitar and come back and I'd have one of my girls, um, this neighborhood girl I spent quite a bit of time with. We'd come over and hang out and uh, we'd, I'd overhear him. And this, this guy had game. Like he would bring in parades of chicks. He would have girls during COVID drive out from ASU just to spend the weekend with him because they wanted to like get a surf from like a legit surf. And he, and he, so he taught me about the Instagram, Instagram branding and creating an image for yourself, getting your certain angles, right. Lighting, right. And really you have to pick a cat category. Um, and I think he had this conversation. He's like, are you gonna be a Texas cowboy? You're gonna be a California surfer boy. He's like, bro, you're not coordinated. You used to be fat. Like you can't surf. Uh, do you want to be a bodybuilder? Do you want to be a fitness model? Like what is your shtick? What is your angle? What is your image? Um, so at this time, like, well, I live on the beach. I'm in California. I'm tan. I'm in pretty good shape. I'll just go for that. Um, now, this was about a year. This was like September, October of la last year, um, or not 2021, uh, 2020. Um, so it got to the point where I was like, okay, well, how do I want to cultivate my image? And then really, again, in my red pill transformation, you start getting to different levels. I eventually got to the point like, you know what? I like myself for who I am. I like playing guitar. I'm kind of a nerd. I write all the time. I do a lot of creative pursuits. I'm uh, I like, I, I geek, I geek out about a lot of things, but I like the gym. I like, I like the ladies and, uh, and I like traveling. So, and I like to eat and I'm, I'm pretty good cook too. Cause I, uh, guys that follow my personal Instagram again, at Jaren Scott, um, J A R E N S C O T T. That is at on Instagram, Jaren, J A R E N S C O T T. One word. Uh, you can look at my stories and see the type of stuff I make. Um, I like junk food, but I like making healthy versions of junk food. And there's a, there's ways you can go about this. And as you get into your fitness and food evolution, you start learning just trick after trick after trick. And there's no one single thing. There's no magic bullet. Like I'm going to take this pill and just instantly be jacked and lean and fit and happy and fun and free. Uh, there are very little habits, micro habits that you have to bring into your life. And on the same time, kick the bad habits out. So um, this is, this is a culmination of that effort. I was eating pretty lean. Uh, they had opened up our beaches. Um, and I had a virgin beach all summer in San Diego with the, with the Venezuelan neighbor, um, amongst, uh, amongst others.
This one, I don't like this angle as much. You can see some of the loose skin uh, in my flanks, which that's, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm going to like a treatment, like a, like a beauty, uh, like one of those beauty spas or whatever that like famous people go to or like models or whatever. They, they have all sorts of like foo-foo type treatments, but I'm trying to get this, um, this flaccid skin taken care of because um, when I get, when I retain water, it's retained in the flanks. And then when I lose the weight, it's like literally just like, like, like the thin skin you have on your forearm. It's just that hanging, hanging on my backside. So I'm, I'm working on now get, getting that all tightened up. So you can kind of see that there. This isn't my favorite photo, but, um, but it shows from the angle and the lighting that I had, I had for the first time in my life, I had deep cuts in my abs. Um, actually in, in the Coachella photo I did, but I think my abs were blockier at this point. I wasn't as big or full as my music festival photo. And we can, we can compare them. Oh God, it's quite a bit back. Uh, yeah, I can't really see it there. So I wasn't as big and full as this photo. But I had more definition here. And at this point, I believe I'd actually taken my testosterone. So before, maybe I was at higher. I was at like, no, no, I was always at 160 milligrams. So um, I started dropping the aromatase inhibitor because I was leaner. And then at this point, I was able to get, um, uh, I started doing uh, HGH, like more of an anti-aging regimen. Those guys that know dosing, um, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to give dosing prescriptions or anything like that. You need to get this stuff checked out before you make these decisions to put hormones or exogenous sources of hormones in your body. Um, but doing my research and talking with my endocrinologist, I decided to do just your, your like minimum maintenance dose for like a child that has, uh, that has the uh, HGH uh, deficiency. So uh, again, it falls under my minimally viable dose philosophy. And essentially what HGH does, it kind of from a, at a molecular, like a biological level, it just kind of speeds everything up, which gives you a little more energy, um, makes it, it has, helps you maintain leanness. It helps uh, recovery, helps your mood. It, it does all sorts of things to your body, but it's essentially an anti-aging uh, agent. And my, my endocrinologist told me that, well, it'll make you feel like you're 15 or 16 again. And I told him, well, I was obese when I was 15 or 16. So I don't know what that feels like. Um, once I added that, um, and again, very, very small dose, a dose that like a child would use, uh, really, it didn't make me any leaner than I was before. It got me the, 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 the deeper cuts and like kind of leaned up the skin a little bit more. But what it did was made it easier to maintain. And that is my goal now is just to maintain this baseline moving forward. I don't do super heavy lifting anymore. I don't do bulk and cut cycles. I don't go anything out of physiological, medically supervised doses for any exogenous hormone so sources. And that is because the goal for me was to just, just create the environment for my genetic potential to flourish and, and be optimal. And from day one, when I met with my uh, endocrinologist and said that, hey, I, I think I'm going to consider TRT or possibly HRT, uh, um, uh, 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 an HRT protocol, that this is the goal. I want to be optimal, but I want the minimally viable dose. So, so I've worked on that. I've dialed that in. Uh, just a lot of people will say like, uh, on, I don't fancy myself an Instagram model or fitness model or anything. Uh, some people ask me if I am, but I'm not. Um, we'll see here shortly. Um, this is my first photo shoot. And I, I've done more since because I want to get the angles, and the images down. And then now that I'm doing creative stuff, I need thumbnails. So when I take 300 B-roll photos or making goofy faces, picking my nose, staring at the sun, squint my eyes, or like tickling, tickling the photographer, AKA my Venezuelan girl trying to make her laugh. Um, you get some pretty goofy faces, which are awesome for thumbnails. So at this point I knew I was going to, I knew that I was going to take the blog eventually and go more visual. I uh, start doing the videos about this time. I started doing the videos um, then I lost my job and spent this, the rest of this year doing some interesting projects in Latin America. And then now I'm at the point where I'm, where I'm going to treat it more like a business and get it going again. So it all came into my image as far as like, you know what, I don't want to do bulk and cuts. I don't want to struggle anymore. I've worked at this point when I started, added this to my regimen, uh, the HGH, I was 15 years into my transformation. I worked pretty, I worked pretty fucking hard. And I thought like, you know what, I deserve it. Um, I don't, I will never be fat again. I might get pudgy, might get, might get a little bloated happens, but I will never be fat again. And that's just, that's just a set point moving forward. Uh, again, once I hit the age of 34, which is the age I am now, that officially marks the point where I had been fitter more than fatter. And, and, and these last couple of weeks, I, I was amazed. I was telling my family members like, God, for as much crap as I'm eating, I should be a lot fatter. I can't believe it. I look in the mirror now. I don't like how I look, but compared to everyone else in my hometown, uh, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm not too worried. Um, I'll be back in Mexico in a couple of weeks and, Guys that are joining me in Nashville, uh, we will we will have a competition to see who uh, who literally has headed to Shred Town, and a lot of a lot of us in Rich's group are musicians too, which I found earlier today. Um, so Nashville, I'm sure we'll be doing shredding on multiple fronts: uh, shredding guitars, shredding abs, and but shredding shredding chicks possibly. Who who knows? That should be a fun trip if it's anything like Miami.
Uh, there's another candid photo that my uh, one of my gym buddies in California took. It was um, I didn't realize he was taking this. You can tell I have my headphones in, which means uh, normally when I go to the gym, there are guys. I asked a coaching client earlier today um, as far as adherence to the gym. Do you prefer a social environment like going with a group of guys and you're competing with each other? a more group type environment where you get your heart rate going and it's more the social aspects. So you don't feel as depressed or isolated or alone. Or do you like going solo? Um, when I started, when I got, when I got in the gym in Houston with my buddies, I liked that aspect because we were working together and trying to build each other's bodies and motivating, helping each other through our goals. And we, and it helped us take extended lunches to like really get in some, some good workouts. Um, I was going through a bulk. So for example, when a guy put up a certain number, then all of a sudden I'd run over like, well, I'm the bovine. I'm stronger than this guy. So I, I immediately surpassed his number, which a week prior, I didn't think I would be able to hit that point. So, so that helps you in that aspect. But now I like to go to the gym by myself. I don't like distractions. I put my headphones in my ears. I don't really track my lists or diet anymore unless I really need to. That's if I'm introducing a new variable or, um, or if there's something I need to track. So maybe, um, maybe I second guess myself. Like, well, what do my macros really look like? Or what does my caloric intake like? Maybe it's too low. Let's bump it up 200 calories daily and see what happens. Um, so I'll track for that. But at this point, I already had it dialed in. I knew my diet, knew how my body worked. Um, I combined multiple advanced techniques for my diet um, and my training regimen. Things that, things that are kind of unorthodox and then many things that more advanced guys do, but they don't do all of them necessarily at once. So again, uh, the way I look at my philosophy, I'll venture out and get new ideas from things outside of my my realm or my niche and then bring them in. Um, a good answer is I've got naturally big thighs. I think it's from I think it's an effect of carrying all that damn extra body weight along around for so long. Uh, so I do I do pretty pretty light leg workouts, but I do high volume, uh, high time under tension and low rest. And then immediately after I go on a pedal bike, which just completely shreds up my glutes and my legs. So um, at this time, I think this is probably one of those fancy Southern California gyms, like Instagram butt models go and take photos. Um, I know cause I started dating those girls at one point. Um, cause I started looking like this and guys that look like this are the types of guys that girls that post butt pics on Instagram and get a ton of followers way more than I'll ever hope to get. And if you're not following me on Instagram, be sure to follow me by the way, uh, at Jaren Scott, J A R E N S C O T T again, Instagram at Jaren Scott, J A R E N S C O T T for my audio only podcast listeners. Um, but the girls that guys swoon over or after on Instagram, um, they typically date guys that look like this. And that's just me stepping outside of myself and saying that at this point, I realized, OK, I, I'm there um, about this point. It was probably about this time last year um, or. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. During this, this probably a couple same couple of weeks. Um, I got to the point internally where I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I, I like how my body looks. I changed my goals. Like, you know, there's really no more progress I need to make. Like, obviously I want to dial stuff in. Like uh, you'll see here in my arm, I, I like developing my brachialis. So like I'll find little muscle groups like, Ooh, maybe if I focus on that, it's like really little teeny tiny muscle, it'll add a little more depth or dimension to my definition. So I'll do, I'll have little nits and tricks like that, that I'll be working on. But in terms of like, I want to weigh this much and have this percent body fat, I've got that dialed in. Um, it's really just an effect of not going straying too far away from baseline when I take time out of the gym or when I'm having fun. So at this point I was pretty happy with myself. I changed my goal now getting older is to age gracefully. That's it. Prior, remember, I, remember, I said that I was skinny fat for a point in my life, and the goal is like, oh, don't be obese again. Well, that's a pretty lame goal. Like, if you set low goals for yourself, like, oh, just don't be fat. Well, okay, I'm not fat, but I'm not fit either. Um, I, I was going to the gym, just spinning my wheels for years and years. So I wasn't tracking anything. I didn't know what was going in my mouth. I didn't know what I was doing. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, I didn't have clearly defined goals or micro goals or sub goals to track my progress to get to that point. At this point, I was at the tail end of that process. I'm like, you know what? I know what I'm doing for my body, for my physique, for my lifestyle, and I can do it consistently. And in fact, when I don't go to the gym, I'm miserable. I am not a fun person to be around when I'm not working out daily. I'll take breaks on the weekend, but I have active rest days. So if I take a, if I go, if I'm out at the gym on Saturday, I'll go for a hike or a bike ride or a stroll on the beach or something like that. I'm always doing something active every single day, minimum, minimum 20 minutes. My workouts are really brief now. Uh, they're 20 minute minimum and they are 40 minute maximum. I'm in and I'm out. It is quick and easy. The extra 20 minutes I, um, I've, I've hired guys in Rich's group to help me like, uh, with my, uh, time management, with financial planning, with all sorts of different things. And there's an activity that one of them, uh, and I did is planning your perfect day and being accountable for your time. So, um, I block my day into blocks. It could be like four hours of time, three hours, two hours, one hour, 45 minutes, half an hour, 15 minutes, 15 minutes is the smallest block. Four hours is the largest block. And 
And then I'll, I get all my, I get all the things, that, all the necessities done. First thing in the morning, I wake up when the, when the sun comes up, the birds are chirping. I'm up along with them. I, I, I've got a nice musical ear. So when the birds are singing, I'm up. I want to, I want to see them. I want to see the sun come over the horizon, have my, have my cup of coffee. Um, although I don't do too much caffeine anymore. So I'll do like a decaf or a half calf. Uh, I want to stay away from stimulants, although my throat's dry. So I need my diet Dr. Pepper, which does have caffeine. Um, and I start my day that way. I do all the necessities within the first four hours. Um, I can break them into sub subtasks. Um, so the main, the main block is a four hour block. I can break them into subtasks, three hours, two hours, one hour, again, 45, 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, guys that are hiring me to do some coaching stuff, uh, we'll get into this like perfect day planning, how to manage your time. Um, this is a system that I use that works for me. However, I, I have tried different systems. So, uh, really in our initial assessment, our discovery phase, we'll go through and see what's going to work best for you. And just like I did with my endocrinologist, um, we'll probably have to try a couple things uh, around and eventually I use the term dial it in. Um, once you're dialed in at this point, I locked it in, which is that I think this, I think this should be the goal for everyone. Again, not to look like this, your body's going to look different. There are genetic differences, environmental differences, all sorts of differences, but to the point where mentally you are happy with how you look, you feel good, you have well-being, you're running relatively low risk to maintain it, um, and and it's just a part of who you are as a human being. Um, if you, when you remove the gym from me again, I'm not a I'm not a happy camper. This yeah, these photos got a bit out of order, but at least they're they're in order by age. So um, this I was pretty lean. I think that was probably about the day where I did that initial photo shoot on the beach with the Venezuelan. So. I'm pretty, I'm pretty lean. Like, uh, like uh, at this point, I'm not like big and bulky and have blocky muscles anymore. I was going more for more of like the, just the California, like good looking guy. Uh, just maybe not even fitness model. I think fitness models are probably a little, a little fuller, um, in terms of muscle fullness. But at this point, I, re I really liked how I looked. I think this is probably my, my peak shape, uh, in my life. Um, I can, I can get back there. I'm a, I'm a little, I have a little more muscle mass now guys. Some of my Miami photos are coming up here. Uh, those were like from literally a month ago. Um, I'm a lot fuller and I still have the definition, but not as lean as this photo here. Although I think this year I'll probably get back to this point. Um, it'll take me two or three weeks. It's not long at all. Um, I'll probably get back to that point and stay at that point. Cause I do like being more lean and agile. And now with my torn meniscus, my, uh, my lower leg training, I've always, I, I've been doing lower weight uh, but higher volume time and attention, all that, uh, for quite a few years now, like I, it's been years since I've lifted heavy, heavy, heavy. Cause I got overzealous on the deadlift one time and threw out my back and couldn't walk for a month. And that really sucks too. So anything that, anything that may potentially lead to me having an extended period of time outside of the gym, I avoid, um, I love deadlift. I still do them every now and then, but it's more for functional movement purposes. Um, today I did my first lower leg or my, my leg workout, um, in God, a few weeks. Um, I kind of babied my knee a little too much. There were certain movements where I felt like it was going to give out. So I'm just trying to recalibrate it to know what my limitations are. And once I feel comfortable and confident and the knee is fully rehabbed or I have to get an MRI, MRI once it's uh, once it's either rehabbed, if the doctor says it's okay, or if it's operated on and then really rehabbed, um, then I probably won't go heavy, heavy, heavy again. Um, I've got, I've got, I've got good sized legs from again, being fat or playing, playing a catcher in baseball for years and years. So they maintain size and actually maintain definition too. Um, and like I said, doing, doing that type of leg workout for me, like the Instagram butt model workout, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google like Instagram butt model videos, you will find them. Uh, and, or just go to a gym where attractive girls go and then watch what they do. Don't, don't stare at them. You'll probably creep them out, especially if you're early in your transformation. You don't want to be like the sloppy guy, uh, who's, who's staring at a, at, a, at a girl's ass in the gym. But, um, but the way in which they train their lower legs, I actually do more of that. And you know, especially you'll see too, I, I prefer Latin women and Latin women prefer me, as I mentioned earlier, but, um, but they have more developed lower bodies just naturally. It's more of a genetic thing. So I think being in those environments too, I usually, I usually train with my girls. Um, my, or I, I take that back. I don't usually train with my girls, but they have the option to come and train with me. We'll go to the gym together. We train individually, but they will usually lean on me for direction in how they train. Um, Another benefit, girls, if you want to date me, um, all of my girlfriends end up having fantastic physiques very, very quickly. And I spend a lot of money on very good food. Um, we'll break down my finances at a future point. So Instagram butt model workouts, 
riding the bike, a pedal bike, single speed pedal bike on the boardwalk immediately after. If you don't have that available, I'm snowed in right now. It's freezing rain. If I walk outside, I will eat shit like an old Looney Tunes cartoon and probably throw my knee out of place and really, really hurt it. Um, so I'm doing a stationary bike, low intensity, uh, steady state cardio is my preference. I've done hit type training before, which is high intensity um, uh, interval training. But for me, I prefer the low intensity steady state because it gives me it gives me time for mental activities too. Like today, I was shopping around for a new song that I want to transcribe immediately after this. I'm gonna I'll, I'll smoke a little bit tonight. I haven't eat, I haven't eaten since this morning, so I'll smoke a little bit and then I'll start transcribing a, a, a new song because I have a music I have a music project actually I'm gonna kick off and I will announce that here very shortly within this week. So you'll see here Instagram butt model workout high volume, a uh, high amount of time under tension low rest time. So usually I spend uh, like 40 seconds or so time under tension uh, in like the 12 to 15 rep range. And then my, um, my rest time is, is not a lot. I do like minute blocks. My rest time is maybe 20 seconds. At first it might not be as easy. So, uh, so, I, so I started off with this training regimen of lowering the weight a bit, staying in the 12 to 15 rep range, um, doing less time under tension, just kind of hammering them out. So if I could hammer them out in like 15, 20 seconds, it's not recommended for uh, hypertrophy type training. Um, I don't recall the exact ranges. Again, I know it works for me personally. Um, but for me, if I go like 15, 20 seconds, 20 seconds is my minimum uh, for time under tension. But that gives me more time for my heart rate to rest. I'm really big on having a low resting heart rate too. Um, so like when I when I had COVID a couple of weeks ago, they gave me like the, my, my sister's a nurse. She's such a sweetheart. Gave me like the little CO2 monitor to make sure that oxygenation, all that stuff was good. I, I'm, I don't no exactly the medical terms, but, um, when I, when I was quitting smoking, my doctor had the same thing. He's like, Hey, we want, we, we need to make sure that like your, whatever your CO2 levels aren't too high or, or, um, that I believe it's oxygenation. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, um, is where it needs to be. So I like having, I like to measure the time between where I hit my maximum heart rate and the time in which it takes to go back to a resting heart rate. And then my resting heart rate, I have a lot of energy. I talk really fast. So my heart rate's probably a little higher now, maybe 68 to 72 range. But typically, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm just relaxing and doing like my own internal audit or I'm thinking to myself or being with myself in the moment. Typically, I'm low 50s, high 40s. So I like my heart rate to be lower. And that, that goes into the age gracefully uh, type thing. So here, once more, I'm sure you're tired of looking at my ass. Uh, I try not to show like, like ass curvature or anything just to really get the glutes. And that is riding a pedal bike after doing leg training. And these next photos... Um, I don't have super, super intense fitness goals anymore. It's just trying to maintain. And now I'm working on my business, my image, uh, building, building my professional life outside of the corporate world, although I still take on corporate clients. And a big part of uh, joining, uh, for those of you watching from Richard Cooper's 1% group, um, if you're in there, uh, you know this already. If you're not in there, you need to sign up, entrepreneurs.com forward slash community. It is definitely recommended. You've seen in front of your eyes my transformation. A lot of that I give credit to uh, Richard Cooper is a content creator. And then also some of the guys in his community. Um, so this was our first big meetup from that community. We went to Miami. Uh, there's there like 30 guys. We all pitched in a bunch of money. Half the guys stayed at this giant mansion that porn stars film scenes and shit at. And, uh, half the guys stayed off site. but we rendezvoused every day at the house and we'd all go out together and have good steak dinners and drink whiskey and pick up girls. And it was, it was an awesome weekend. Uh, th that wasn't the entire focus. That was secondary. We did like a lot of, um, Bon it's, it's, it sounds hoity-toity, but male bonding experiences, uh, sitting around a bonfire, in this case a pool, while looking at a Miami sunset or sunrise, and, uh, and just sharing our stories. A lot of us have the same stories. A lot of us are in different parts of our transformation, which I, I decided is why I decided to do this video or cover this topic in the first place. Because a lot of guys, this is the most, I believe this is the most recent photo I posted on Instagram, on my personal side, um, uh, my personal account. And a lot of guys think that this is how I've always looked. This is how I've always li lived my life. Um, I have guys that DM me like, yeah, man, but I could never do that because I'm not tall enough or I'm not a certain color or I don't have a certain occupation or I don't live in a certain place or insert whatever bullshit excuse you want to to not create the best version of yourself. I have heard it. Guys will use that as an excuse of why they can't be like me. The fact that they say they want to be like me, uh, it's, it, it's flattering. I, I, I try to be humble about this stuff. In fact, I look at myself some, sometimes and still surprise myself, but I got to the point exactly where I wanted to be using that, that visualization uh, exercise that I had done quite a bit ago. So this is my most recent photo. Um, we went to Miami, got the mansion. We each pitched in some money, which when you have 30 guys pitching in money, uh, you, can, you can afford some really cool stuff. And we got a photographer, professional shoot for the weekend. Uh, 
we had low light this day, so it was tough to get in all the shots. We had very limited hours. We had like 30 guys, although not everyone paid for a photographer. Trying to get them in. We flew out a guy from L.A., like legit guy. This photo, um, just for uh, just for clarification, is not edited or touched up or anything. This came from like the raw roll. Um, I, I think I'm, I still need to find my edited photos or reach out to them and get those. So uh, there's no touch-ups or anything here. So like, it's Miami. It's hot. It's humid. So I've got like kind of a greasy forehead and Usually I like more definition in my tricep, but um, guys, if you, when you join, um, I'm going to launch here really shortly. I believe I have the platform. I'll do an announcement here as I start getting more people on the platform, more people on my email list, following all that stuff. Um, when I launch my premium group, the game room, we will go into this, like how to take photos, how to hire photographers, how to set up shoots. Uh, my first shoot was the that beach photo shoot. But since then, I've gotten a little better at doing it. And actually, the girls I date, uh, a lot of girls I date, are, I require that they have a creative aspect to their life. So, uh, like, like one of the girl, one of the girls, uh, my graphic designer, um, I, I will tell her. Or at one point, she's like, "Oh, I, I used to like to sketch and doodle when, when I was a little girl." I was like, well, okay. Well, when I'm doing my creative stuff, uh, I, my day is blocked out again in those, in those very strict time blocks. Um, when I'm in a creative time block, well, you're not going to interrupt me. So I bought her like a canvas and a little sketchbook and like, like the, the artsy, the arts and crafts supply kits. So, um, if we're together in the same city at the same time, I'm pretty mobile. I'm a digital nomad. Um, that was enough. We'll cover that on another topic, how to go through that transformation process. There's a lot of mental things you have to do. And again, that is a whole transformation in and of itself. Um, but when we happen to be in the same city, obviously she stays with me or I'll stay with her. We'll, we'll stay together at some place. And, uh, and she'll she'll bring her she'll bring her arts and crafts supplies like a little sketch pad or something. Uh, she's I I paid for her for some courses for like graphic design work, uh, which she helps me out on like the thumbnails and all that stuff. So I am a big fan of incorporating the creative element of you into your transformation. That's why I'll be announcing this music pro project here shortly. I had my initial kickoff call with the guy today, but now we just need to lock in dates, times. And then how we're going to uh, cross market uh, each, each other's platforms. And uh, we'll, we'll help each other on the technical side too. So that'll be announced here in the next couple of days. If you want to hear more about that, go to menshrine.com, uh, sign up for the email list. I'll announce that or uh, go on Instagram at menshrine. So I separate, my, I separate my personal and branded accounts because in my personal life, I do have corporate clients. I have friends. I have family. Um, I have people that they – if they want to find out, they know pretty publicly what I'm all about, but if they're not looking, they just think I'm just a, they just think I'm just your normal average everyday guy. So I like to, I like to, uh, I like to hide in plain sight is what I say. I don't want to stand out as much, but in, in this area, obviously you guys are looking for this content. You found me through via other channels that cover this type of content. Um, I don't mind sharing my personal side so you can take a look into my actual life outside of uh, the red pill manosphere type stuff. Um, I am, I am multidimensional, which you should uh, strive to be in your transformation as well. When you're doing like more of your mental transformation, we'll cover these topics on uh, future, future casts. Um, but you want to be multidimensional. You want to have some, uh, you want to be dynamic in, in your personality, uh, show different sides of you and then nurture, cultivate those sides and bring them to light. So on my personal Instagram, it's at Jaren Scott, uh, again, audio only, if you're just joining us at J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. -T. Once more, that is my personal Instagram account at Jaren Scott, J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. -T. If you want more of the branded, more kind of red pill leaning stuff, although I'm going to start getting away from that term because uh, I believe I, Moff and I discussed this on my podcast last night. Uh, go back and review that. That was actually a really good conversation as far as more of having a framework of living in living in reality on reality's terms and then realizing that you are an, you are an architect of your own universe so you're not a victim of society you're not a victim of standards you need to need to cut all of the bs thought patterns that don't serve you view reality accept it for what it is and then realize okay no one cares about me no one's going to help me not even the government uh, they they'll say they're going to help you but uh but you'll you'll suffer if you if you lean on them for your 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 support and assistance. And we'll see that here very shortly uh, over these next few years in society and possibly globally. There, there are some political and cultural undercurrents that are occurring right now as we speak. And these things are starting to manifest in our, our physical reality, but um, I won't get too nerdy on those topics. These are, these are topics for the future. Uh, but, but on the, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to stray away from like the red pill moniker. Um, it really, it's going to be more of just creating a lifestyle uh, that you love. I believe my marketing tagline is uh, create a life worth living and loving. And that was, that was my goal from day one when I went back and God, going back to the, 
I went too far back. Chubby guy drinking in Houston. At this point, I had had that vision set. This is how I'm going to live my life. I am, oh God, when did I start my transformation? 2017 or in 2022? So I'm five years in my actual transformation. I think I became red pill aware probably six or seven years ago. So it took me a lot longer. Um, there are guys in Rich's group, for example, that have joined in less less than a year. And there's a lot of there's a lot of guys just like me that live their own life on their own terms. It's completely different from my life. Uh, again, not I'm not saying that the way my way of doing things is the way you should do it. I want to share with you the mental mindset shift and then the framework for how to go about doing this. And that's what I'm really, that's what I really want to get across. So you don't have to live like me. You don't have to live in Latin America, date multiple women, do bike rides at the sunset, um, play guitar in a 500 year old uh, city park. Best park in the world is actually in Mexico city, eight times bigger than central park, 500 year old Spanish castle, a bunch of cool monuments, statues, 300 museums within a few kilometer radius. I love my lifestyle, but that's not for everyone. Um, my coaching clients will tell me that their idealized version of who they are, who they really are, but who they currently, uh, when they look in the mirror, they, they currently don't match up with who they are in their head. Um, when they describe their perfect lifestyle, their perfect day, they do, they do their dreams uh, analysis and start documenting their goals and really putting down tangible, smart, which is smart, measurable, attainable, um, uh, oh God, I forgot, I forgot the acronym. Yeah, guys, correct, correct me in the comments there, but so smart goals, um, um, uh, realistic, realistic is the R and then T is time. You have to have a time to track the goal. So it's a uh, smart, measurable, attainable, realistic and time. When you start setting your smart goals, you, you have these images in your head. Um, I won't share my goals now because I like to, I like to kick ass in silence. And then when people notice, I'll be like, oh yeah, here's how I did that. So that's just the way I go about things. I don't want to broadcast what I'm doing. Um, I'll broadcast what I'm doing at the business because you guys are going to see that. And then things that are coming up here shortly, the premium community, um, premium content. And then uh, I have my coaching offer at menshrine.com. I can do video sponsored requests for those um, who don't want to spend as much, but maybe want me to go as in depth, if not more into the topic, just I'll be sharing it with uh, people. And if, and if there's any problem with the price point, I'm still looking to put out more content. So you can DM me too. If, it is, if it's an interesting enough topic, or you want to come on and collaborate, we can definitely do that as well. So uh, go through Menshrine for that. Or uh, my personal account, you can too, but um, I'll kick you over to the Menshrine at some point. Um, just to make sure I keep my personal life and then my brand separate. Because with those of you who know the state of current uh, big tech companies, who knows, my, my branded account could go at any point. And hopefully they don't take my personal account with it because I don't post anything controversial there. It's just a glimpse of me traveling, having fun, loving life, playing guitar, uh, and just meeting interesting people. Um, this is another one from Miami. Um, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't look as full there. I think I think that weekend we 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 were pretty active. I didn't do a lot of eating, so I think I lost uh, some muscle fullness, just due to the lack of calories and carbs at that point. But we were in Miami. Lots of Latins, lots of cigars. Um, one of one of the guys in Rich's groups, um, or Rich's one percent group. He's not a photographer. Or take that back. He is a photographer, but that's not his full-time daytime job. He wasn't the professional photographer. We flew out from LA. And in, um, in my opinion, he did a very good job. I think it's comparable, if not better. Um, and not not to not to knock the, the guy that flew out from LA, but we had very limited lighting conditions and we had a lot of guys to get through a lot of different shoots and setups in a very little amount of time. So we were all kind of rushed. Um, this was one of the last nights there. I think I was in the pool. Um, I always tell guys, take candid shots. You get some of the best shots when you don't know you're having photos being taken of you. And as, as lame as it might sound, get your guy friends in the habit, especially if you guys are in this journey together of building your Instagram together, getting more quality images of you, or just understanding what your body looks like. Like I have pretty broad shoulders and like the, the, the V, the V taper now. So I can't like look at my back and see what it looks like. So seeing this picture, um, I was like, Oh, okay. Well, like, well, I, I, I like the width of my, my rear delts and my shoulder span and then how the, how the back comes down. Um, so this was a candid photo. I recommend guys do that. Um, You'll see more with my Instagram. I'm getting more and more photography. I'm, 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 I've done a few photo shoots now, and I've got a ton more photos in the backlog. I have to polish and, and edit and get posted out there. So I've got, I've got enough backlog content for a while. Uh, same with like guitar vid videos. I'll post the guitar reel videos and then realize like, well, I recorded that like three months ago. I'm considerably better uh, now in reality as I am in the video I posted from three months ago that I just happened to post today. So, uh, so, so I, there's a bit of a buffer between the backlog cause I'm, I'm getting in the habit, uh, professionally treating this as a business and building my brand of creating more and more content. So, um, when you come into my premium group or you do my coaching services, if that's what you do, I've had content creators reach out to me too, that, 
uh, there at the point I was a couple of years ago, maybe where I was stuck that just putting myself out there and just going for it. A lot of guys are stuck at that point. So if you're at that point, your transition, reach out. I have no problem. Uh, we can do, con- we can do a consult. And if you want to collaborate, I'll share workflows and all that stuff too. Um, I am a digital marketer by trade. I've gotten, I got pretty high up pretty fast in my career. Um, and now this whole last year, I've just been doing, I've just been doing little projects, l- low paid projects. Cause I'm a, I'm a minimalist. So I have like no expenses and I live in countries that are way cheap to live in for a maximum quality of lifestyle. But, um, but this year I'm looking to change that. I'll take on more and more kind of higher ticket clients as I start, as I start improving or realizing my own self-worth professionally and getting up there. But now's a good time to get in. If you want to get my attention, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this stuff going. So I'm in the nascent phase. I'm, I'm right in the front end of that exponential growth curve that people start to experience. So you can still get me. I still have some time, not a lot of time. My calendar is filling up fast. So uh, be sure to go to menshrine.com if you want coaching services um, or the sponsored video request. And really we will focus on, we'll do exactly that. We'll, we'll take an assessment of where you are at the beginning. Um, This is just another photo. Um, A lot of these are kind of polished up. Not, not this one, but a lot of the, like these ones are, are, they were set to be taken like with a DSLR camera for the purpose of being edited at some point and then presented on Instagram or with marketing collateral for, uh, for my men's shine brand or uh, my, my, my creative brands. This is just a, a, a dirty mirror selfie that I don't even recognize the background. I don't think that's my house. At some point I'd probably just walked in some dudes or what some, some probably one of my neighbors, um, places with my shirt off. I'm like, Oh damn, you know, abs look pretty good today. Um, this one, I believe, was fairly recent. I, I think it was right before the Miami trip, which was mid-November. So probably like first week or two of November. I was like, oh, well, this is what I look like on a, on any given day. So this is my ideal for my body, just like where I like to have my set point. Again, that's that's maintaining pretty easy diet to follow. Um, I, I, do, I do leaner during the week. I do carb refeeds when I need them if I'm feeling a little flat. But I, I manage a pretty a pretty heavy deficit. But on my on my cheat days, which I realized because I, I I've tracked them before, I'm like well I'm not as fat as I used to be on my cheat days. Well I don't really cheat that much anymore. I just eat I just eat in a caloric surplus, but I eat the right kind of food. And literally that's just spending all Sunday eating. But Me- Mexico has fantastic food. You can you can cram in the calories in Mexico if you want to. They've they've got steakhouses all over that place, and they don't have a supply chain demand or a supply chain shortage like they do in the U.S. Um, Coming back to the U.S. this time around, people always say, well, there's no hyperinflation. There's no supply chain issues. I'm like, yeah, th- yeah, there are because I don't live in the U.S. anymore. So it's like when you haven't seen a friend in a long time, like let's say you haven't seen a friend in a year and you're like, oh, my God, you're looking good. Are you losing weight? And that's that's actually to tie it in. That's what happened to me. People are like, what are you doing? You look amazing. How would you lose this weight? How would you make this transformation? Where would you start? How would you get there? Like point me in the right direction. Um, well, when you live outside of the U.S. from a societal standpoint and you come back like, oh, God, this place place has been sliding downhill for a long time. It's been a long time coming, but like this recent year, especially it's accelerating, like in front of my very eyes, things are, things are not heading in the right direction. How I prefer to live my lifestyle. Let's be very clear about that. Some people like having hypodermic needles on the sidewalk. Some people like homeless people crapping in front of their houses. Some people like just exorbitant uh, property values and areas that are essentially ghettos in third world countries. Um, so if that's the way you like to live life, that's great. You know how to vote, how to, to live that lifestyle. Again, I don't need to tell you what color. We're all adults here. Um, you have two eyes connected to a brain. But living outside of the U.S. for me is beneficial for my quality of life. Um, I can maintain this physique year round for very little effort. Um, 20 to 40 minutes in the gym plus commute time. Where I'm currently living in Mexico City, it's a real nice part of town. So my gym is literally across the street from me. I can go whenever I want, uh, which is awesome. Um, that, that is exactly where I want to be. So it's very easy for me to maintain this now. And that is, I said, that's where I wanted to be. And then, uh, photos, uh, I, it's been a while since I showed photos of girls. This is, this is one of my main girls. She does a lot of like design and creative work for me. Um, all of my girls are required to do some kind of creative work, whether that be music, whether that be visual design, whether it be whatever they need to embody that creative aspect of their life, because I am a whole person, a dynamic person. I have all of I have all of my verticals together. Some some areas are lacking. Some areas are better than others. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, guys in Rich's group know what my goals are for 2022, and we'll, we'll hold each other accountable. Um, but in this sense, um, uh, she, she's one of my girls. She does, she does a lot of creative and design work for me. I really appreciate her effort. Um, I really think she has a good eye for this stuff. I'll point in the right direction, and I'll, I'll coach her along the way. She starts building her brand, and she starts getting away from doing – 
more corporate style work and, and getting, um, and, and getting clients on the design side and scale and creating an offer and scaling it and all that stuff. So again, if you're, if you're in my inner circle guys, I'm going to love you. I'll take care of you. If you're my family, you hear me talk, you hear me talk about my family all the time. I talk about riches guys all the time. And then, uh, if you're lucky enough to be one of my girls, you are going to have the most, you're going to have the, you're going to have a fantastic relationship. You're going to have a good time. You, you are, you, you will be required to have a good physique. You will be required to be healthy and happy. Uh, really my requirements for you are the same requirements that I have for myself. Uh, so I realize not everyone's there in my interpersonal friendships, professional relationships, uh, um, uh, romantic relationships, but that is a standard I hold to myself. And if you want to come into my inner circle, that is a standard that I will hold to you too. And really, once you figure out how to do this stuff, I understand not everyone's there. That is the entire point of this video. You saw where I came from. Um, it, it, if you're at any point in the journey, I will be your friend. I'll reach out to you. I'll help you. I'll give you all the tools and resources I can to help you get to where you want to be as per your definition for yourself. Um, now, if you say that, oh, I want to be a heroin addict and live in a van down by the river, rip Chris Farley, uh, then we're going to have a problem here. Um, one, I'll probably recommend you, you you get like some actual medical treatment because you're way, you're too far gone to even be having these talks. Um, but I, I'll still be your friend. I'll still be kind to you. Um, I, I won't let you necessarily into my inner circle, but uh, but you can get there as you make this, as you go through this process too. But as long as you're moving forward, I'm completely fine with you. So uh, God, I've gotten really tangential tonight, but this is, this is something I've been sitting on for a long time in terms of me wanting to share with people. And I didn't know how to go about it. And finally today, uh, I, I, I spent all day on calls, sales calls, coaching calls, and then uh, some creative kickoff calls for uh, some creative collaboration uh, side projects that I'll incorporate here on, on my channel. Um, so I, I came up against the wall pretty fast. Like, oh no, I have like an hour before my live stream. What am I going to do? Um, so I built, I put this folder together a while ago. Um, so, so this is, this is one of my girls. You'll see here in the photos, like body language as compared to my wife where she looked kind of annoyed with me or my ex-wife looking annoyed with me. Um, we have a good time together. And then this girl's got a good visualize. So she manages all, she manages all the photographers and all the editing and all that stuff. And it really helps me out. And then um, that's why I, I always tell guys, have your, have your girls take your photos uh, for you. And again, for those of you who may be joining, I won't go through the whole story again, but as I start wrapping it up, I'll just, I'll just click through these photos. Uh, me as a baby, a little normal guy, um, got real big, decided not to be big anymore. Uh, went to the gym, just, I was your average American guy who goes to the gym, kind of more on the skinny fat side, and then had the tragedy with the divorce that I repeated from my childhood and decided to do something about it. Not only do something about it, but separate myself from the rest and really really focus on being the best version of myself in every aspect of my life. And uh, again, there's always, there's always room. Oops. I'm going too fast. There's always room for improvement as you get this self-improvement process. So for example, maybe your financial house is not in order. Maybe your uh, spiritual health is not in order. Maybe your emotional health is kind of out of whack. Maybe there's some psychological issues, substance abuse issues. So different guys are in different phases and different categories or different verticals of their lives. And I understand that, but as long as you're working in improving all of them, then I think, I think you're going to be fine and getting yourself together and creating the best version of yourself. And you'll notice when you go through this process, as you can see here visually, there's different levels, lose a hundred pounds. Okay. Keep off the hundred pounds for a couple of years, go to the gym and maintain it, uh, add on some more muscle mass, get lean, but leaner than before. And then I, I use the term to dial everything in. So if that's, if that's my biggest takeaway guys, um, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm trying to be real humble. I'm just trying to share with you all the journey that I've been on. Um, I thought it was a long journey. I knew it was gonna be a long journey when I started looking back. It has been a long journey. It's been a very successful, I'm very pleased with my progress. Um, I'm very happy. I decided to go on the journey and stick with it every single day for the last five, six, seven years. I have been getting just a little bit better in various aspects of my life. And now I'm at the point where I recently got to a new level, putting myself out there creatively, starting to make money from this. And I think I'm going to scale it pretty quickly, which is nice because every time you hit a new level in an area of your life, you realize, oh no, I'm back at, I'm, I'm back at ground zero, but you know the process. You know how to go from the bottom of one level to the top of that level and then enter a new level and just do the same thing. So I'm entering chapters in my life where the opportunities are abound. People are opening doors for me that I would have never thought possible for myself, but I knew they were going to happen at some day. But I fell into like your typical American mindset of just sitting around waiting for someone to give it to me. Like, oh, maybe the government will help me. Maybe, maybe, maybe my parents will help me. Maybe someone, maybe I'll live in LA and I'll, and someone will walk into me and realize, hey, I'll give you your big break. A lot of people fall into these delusions. Nope, not going to happen. You need to 
get rid of all of those terrible, negative, toxic thoughts that have been instilled in your mind through society, get your shit together and become the owner, the architect, the uh, creator of your own life because the, the, you're, you have to live with yourself. No one else lives with you unless you physically live with someone, but you live with yourself in your own head. And when you start removing the bullshit beliefs, uh, beliefs and thought systems or thoughts and belief systems, you'll realize pretty quick, you'll get a really clear image of who you, who you are, where you're at, where you want to be, where you want to get going. And then really it's just up to you to get there. And, um, like I said, if you need any help doing that, go to menshrine.com. You can get my coaching services, uh, premium video services. If you want to see how I live my life on any given day, I'm, I, I post pretty dorky stuff, but I have, I have a fairly regular posting schedule. I'll go to at Jaren Scott on Instagram, which is at J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. -T. Again, that is at J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T -T on the gram and uh, for the men, for the men shrine branded stuff, same thing on Instagram at men shrine. Uh, it's spelled just how it sounds. M E N S H R I N E. Once more, M E N S H R I N E for men shrine on Instagram. And if you haven't done so, please like, share, comment on the video, set the notification bell, and subscribe to my channel because I will be putting out much more content much more frequently. I'm trying to do a daily. Uh, type thing if that's not necessarily feasible okay that might be the point but for now uh, that is the goal these initial days not since i'm locked down and i have this knee and it's frozen outside and i can't really do anything so uh, so let me know how i can help you um i just realized i had the screen share up the, the whole time and guys i have been going for a while i'm going on two and a half hours now so um i'll go through these comments real quick i'm really i really apologize for that i got too into the topic because this is really personal to me um this is stuff that I was embarrassed to tell anyone before I told you I had girlfriends that I didn't tell what I was doing or the struggles I was going through. So now looking back, now that I'm going, I, I want to show that like, this is my brand. This is what I'm here trying to do. Um, and we'll go through the comments real quick. Holla. Great work and determination, bro. That's commitment to yourself. Dr. Carnage. Thank you so much. Uh, what's up my brother nice yeah i'm uh, yeah i'm uh, thanks guys I, uh, I i really appreciate you coming in here and coming in here and supporting me for my initial podcast i know they, they might be kind of rocky i'm going on tangents i'm getting a little a little windy and wordy but um i'll get better i'll dial i'll dial it in to use my own language to use my own verbiage or vernacular i'll dial it in as i get going and these topics will be much more succinct um unless you like more of the the long format form i know when i was going through various stages of my process I listen to a lot of guys. I've mentioned the content creators I followed at one point or another, and um, I'm pretty academic, so I'll cite I'll cite my sources for a lot of stuff. Yeah, these are oh, that's spam stuff. My bad. Um, um, so um, so I cite my sources along the way, and at some point, I hope that if you guys get value out of something I'm doing, that you do the same thing. That you you cite me as a source, or uh, really, my goal is I know that there's a there's a lot of there's a big rift, I think, in the in the community now in terms of men's self improvement and development or personal development. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty new to the game, so I don't I'm, I'm not familiar with these guys. I followed their content. Um, I, I don't, but I don't know any of them personally. I have no beefs or anything. And unfortunately, I think it's given a bad name to the space. So again, I'm going to pull away from using those buzzwords, those monikers, those keywords. Um, you guys know what I'm referring to. But just men's men's self development in general, uh, guys, you're. You're, you're, you're not, you're not alone. Don't suffer alone. And don't think that you can't achieve something just because society tells you otherwise. Um, once you realize that you are the architect of your own universe, then you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to be well off. You might be a little lonely at first. Like there's times where I get a little lonely, but uh, since I'm my own best friend, I actually enjoy being alone. And once you learn to enjoy being alone, you find that people want to be around you more. It's kind of interesting. Um, Jesse Davis. Oh, Je Jesse, oh, Jesse, I love you, bro. Uh, Je Jesse was one of my bro bros. Um, we'll get into a topic in the future when I talk about like drinking too much, but my inspiration for quitting Jesse and I had, we um, Jesse and I didn't live together, but we studied together in Mexico. I believe Jesse was down there for a year. I was down there for, for quite a bit longer, but um, Jesse was down there. We did some traveling together, spent a lot of time together, did a lot of cooking, did a lot of salsa dancing and having just, just awesome, awesome times in Mexico. So yeah, Je Jesse, thanks for listening in, man. I appreciate you. And um, uh, Jesse, you, you know who I'm talking about at some point, maybe I'll ping you if you want to come on and talk about it. Um, we can do that. If not, then, then I'll tell that story in terms of, um, I'm, I'm very big on watching the drinking, watching the substance abuse, because 
a, a very good friend of I that I considered a brother. And I know Jesse did too. I think Jesse was actually closer with him than I was uh, when we lived together in Mexico or studied together and had this shared experience as young foreign guys in a foreign land and just exploring and just have, just having the time of our lives. Uh, God, God, that was a good time. Um, unfortunately there were people that the store that that was the high point of their life and their life ended shortly thereafter because of these issues that I bring up that were not addressed. And unfortunately I was not at the point in my life to one, recognize it to be able to do anything about it or three, to have the gumption to shake them back to life. Like my buddies in Houston and be like, Hey, shit's done. We're not doing this anymore. So that, that, that is largely my inspiration for doing this. I mean, there's multiple, there's multiple inspiration. Like my divorce was tragic and all that. But when I started getting my stuff together and then looking around me and seeing that people that were close to me were going through these same tragedies and they had no one to reach out to, no one to lean on. And unfortunately, they didn't make the decision I did to create this awesome version of myself that I, that I love living with. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them went the other way. And, uh, and uh, Jesse, I know, I, know, I know you know who I'm referring to, not to sidetrack or get too dark after, after the end of this episode, but um, that's really the inspiration for for doing this is to help guys that were in my situation who might not have the tools, resources, or network necessary. Um, definitely reach out. Let me know if you need help with anything. If I cannot help you personally, then I will point you in the right direction. Um, to be very clear in the space, in the men's personal development, uh, self-help space, a lot of guys are saying like, Oh, you know, there's, there's a lot of grifters online or there's guys looking at this to just make money. So I'll be very clear. Um, with me, there should never be any mystery. I will let you know exactly what I'm up to. I am in this to make money. That is an area of my life I am actively looking to improve upon. I've done the corporate thing forever. I've slaved away. I've done the 14-hour days to be looked over for promotions, not get Christmas bonuses, while the, while, the, while, the, while the idiot copywriter who falls asleep in the break room and takes extended lunches every single day and smokes every single hour, that guy's going to New York and getting, and getting sponsored events, and he's getting promotions. And, and so... Those days are over for me. That's not how I'm going to run my professional life. But that means I have to go out on my own and do this stuff. Um, if any corporate clients are watching, don't worry. I still love you. I'll still, I'll, I'll still fulfill the contract. I'm just saying that, that my personal shift is that I am in control and in command of my own life. So um, that leads to the professional side too, guys. This, it takes a lot of time to put this stuff together, a lot of time, um, uh, uh, emotional resources and energy. But it is fun. It's something I enjoy doing. However, um, even living in Mexico, things aren't free. So I need to I need to make some money uh, somehow. Being creative is so important. Johnny Davis. Yep, I agree. Um, I don't hear a lot of guys in the uh, self men's self de development and self help space uh, mention that thing. But um, again, I'm gonna start tackling that topic of why it is important to be creative. It adds a new dimension to your life, and it adds another layer to your personality that you might not even realize is possible. And then uh, with the the musician, the project we're gonna launch here shortly. Um, we'll get more into like the, like the, the transcendent nature of it. And you can almost say there's a spiritual quality. Um, I won't start, I won't start talking on spiritual topics until I define where I stand on that. I have a, like anything, I have a unique way of looking at things. So I need to like really spend some time to get my thoughts together on the topic to our, learn how to articulate them correctly. And then to make sure that um, I'm not misleading anyone in any direction um, when it gets to those topics. But there is, there is like a higher, level power transcendent nature something happens to you when you get in the zone in a flow state when you're in a creative endeavor which is why i definitely recommend it to all guys looking to self-improve um and that'll that'll be a that'll be a recurring theme uh, as my channel starts to grow and as we get going um if you have to choose one thing gym or combat sports you know what to be honest i i wrestled a bit in middle school and high school, because I, I was I was so overweight that uh, that uh, my parents required me to be in some sort of physical activity at all times. Um, so I don't want to say I was athletic. I didn't have an athletic build, obviously being that fat. But but I moved. Like they recognized there was a problem. Um, so I did some wrestling. I was never really that good at it. I was I was 200 pounds by the time I was 12, which in whatever wrestling league or division or whatever the hell it was that I was in. That put me in the heavyweight class. If I cut down to like 192, I believe was the official weight at that time in my school, league, class, whatever. Um, I believe 192 was for me to go to the lower class. I could wrestle from like a 175 to 192. But uh, I had a hard time getting down there. Like I'd, I'd cut a ton and like almost want to pass out and then sweat it all out and get dehydrated. So normally I weighed in, in into the heavyweight class and that class was wide open. So at like 200, I'd wrestle a Simone who's like 300 pounds. I'd shoot on him. He'd sprawl and like almost break my neck and I'd just flatten me like a pancake. So um, didn't enjoy that too much. Later on, when I, when I did my initial transformation, like the big weight loss, I tried to do some boxing, but uh, I, I was a newbie and I think I just picked a bad gym. Um, I went in there and 
uh, one of the guys, uh, you get like a lot of guys in there that like, I, I call it like the macho or the alpha bravado, like, Oh, I gotta be the bigger, biggest and baddest ass of all guys. Like, that's cool. If that's you do that. A lot of guys are wired that way. My, my Marine brother was wired that way. And we're, for, we're, we're from the same ilk. Uh, all of his Marine brothers, like he's my blood brother, but his Marine brothers, cause they, they, they have a brotherhood in the, in that culture, in that environment. His brothers are all that way. So I get it. Like a lot of guys that fall more into the type A personality that ha- that embody more alpha traits than beta traits necessarily, they fall into that camp and they'll lean more towards combat sports. I do want to get more into them, but unfortunately the last time I tried doing boxing, um, I had a pretty bad experience. It was like day one or two and the, and someone convinced me to spar and the guy just beat the shit out of me essentially just fucking wailed on me. And, uh, I think that's a dickhead thing to do guys. If, if, if you've been in the gym for a while, been in a combat sport, been in music, if you've achieved mastery in any area of your life and there's a new person coming in, don't, put them off to the sport like obviously don't coddle them and hold their hand either give them a realistic expectation of what the sport craft creative endeavor professional endeavor whatever it is that someone's trying to improve upon uh involves but don't like day one in boxing class i actually want to learn how to box like don't 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 come in like oh hey, hey bro let's spar and just completely just completely fucking wail on me um so that turned me off um I do want to get back into some kind of combat sport. I've, I've, I've been, I've been worried about my knees. It's been a couple of times this year where it's been giving me problems. And this time around, like it's the first time, like I haven't been able to legit walk um, before it bugged me for, it would bug me for like 15 minutes max. And then it was like a switch that was flipped. It would just go away and I'd spring up to my feet and I'd be able to walk again. But every time that I, that I tweak it wrong, it, it gets worse and worse. So I need to make sure, I need to make sure that I at least have a clean bill of health, get at least get an MRI and hopefully there's nothing wrong. Uh, then I'll get into combat sports or um, if I do need surgery, you know, do the surgery, do the rehabilitation and then ease my way back into it. But um, I did some, I spent six months this year in El Salvador and in those types of countries, everyone does combat sports, even females. Um, If you know how those countries work, the security situation, you kind of have to. Um, So guys that I met at the gym, um, I had, I had some good buddies down there, like higher class guys, uh, guys that had their stuff together that, kind of live their life like I do, even in a really, really small, tiny, I don't want to say impoverished. They're getting better. They have a new president right now and they're, and they're, they're, they're really trying to shift things in that country, but maybe they're going about it in ways that a traditionally American cultured person might not necessarily agree with. However, it is working uh, from what I saw firsthand. Um, But things like sending in a private military to remove judges forcefully, I'm not much on board with that. However, I won't get into politics in other countries. That is a bad idea when you live abroad, but for me as an outsider, from my experience, I'm like, okay, that's not the way I'd go about it, but I agree with it. Um, that, that country had some problems and that they're, they're getting it together very quickly. However, because of those problems, and there's still a lot of problems, there's problems in every country. Actually, the U.S. is getting worse and most countries I travel to are, try, are trying to get better. For whatever reason, the world's reversed uh, for, but for one reason or another. Um, but they did a lot of combat sports in El Salvador. So I, so I, I did go and roll around a couple of times. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it, so I did Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I think I've asked guys in Rich Group, Rich's group, which they'd recommend bet- between BJJ or boxing. Um, I've heard uh, striking over BJJ. I've heard BJJ over boxing because it's more of like a chess type match. I'll probably do both, but that's something that's on the docket for 2022. I just got to get this business going, get my workflows down off the ground. Got to make sure this knee is not going to give me problems in the future, whatever that requires. And then, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to get into more combat sports. Um, feel free to, I'm going to end this podcast or uh, live stream here shortly, but uh, feel free to reach out uh, directly, like DM me or in the comments and what you'd recommend if uh, that. Um, what you're saying is true. I don't know what that's in regards to, but let's just say it's everything I say is true. I'm never wrong, which uh, let's be honest. I'm actually wrong all the time in, 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 in commencing the self-improvement process. You don't have to be your own worst enemy. You don't have to be your own harshest critic. You just have to be honest. You have to be the most honest person with yourself as you are with anyone else. And when you get in that habit, then you'll just start being honest with other people because you get to the point where you just, you just don't fucking care. Like like years ago when I was fat, I would never take my shirt off in public, but I took the pictures in front of the mirror to see where I was at because I knew I was not going to be at that point anymore. Um, uh, does becoming alpha solve every problem? Uh, I would say no. And I... Let, let me let me say this carefully because I know there's guys in the space that differ with opinion here. Um, I say that there's alpha more traits. So like you embody alpha traits or beta traits. So 
um, taking the lead in a situation or learning to understand indicators of interest and learning how to uh, escalate an interaction with a girl, learning how to get her hamsters spinning, create desire, create attraction, um, escalate. Those are more alpha type traits, whereas beta traits are more comforting type traits. There was a point in my uh, transformation where I got too hung up on the alpha versus beta uh, paradigm and tried to, it was earlier in the transformation where I got a little dogmatic, well, alphas do this and alphas wear that and alphas think this and alphas behave like this. And then girls see through that stuff. It works. It works initially like, 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 like uh, more guys that are more kind of go to the PUA route, the pickup artistry route. Um, there is an art to it and you have to, you have to focus more on the alpha skills, almost entirely on the alpha skills for the initial pickup, the initial attraction and the initial lay. But um, I'm, I mean, I do pretty well in that aspect in terms of getting new girls in the rotation, but ideally I like to keep them around. I, li I like to have good relationships with women and, uh, and like to not spend too much time in the acquisition of new females, but anyone who's getting into this type of dating knows that you have to constantly keep your pipeline stacked, keep your options open, make sure there's new prospects coming in the door because plates do spin off and you need to, you need to have room for new ones to come in. Um, and then I've realized once I stopped caring about alpha versus beta that, that my, my, my results dating wise just went through the roof because that's not my primary focus anymore. My focus is the things I communicated. I'm doing more of my creative projects, getting that part, that side of me out there and then trying to figure, trying to make some money off of it and doing that very quickly so I can continue uh, my lifestyle, doing things I enjoy rather than working for corporate uh, clients that maybe not that I don't enjoy the work. I love the methodology, but I would rather, I would rather talk to guys and answer comments like this and help you guys and do three hour long live streams and, uh, and really delve into some deep issues that I, I think are not being covered or important to cover. So I would say alpha doesn't solve every problem. However, if you have beta problems, um, uh, I think alpha solutions will definitely help you get over those, but you'll get to a point where you'll realize you can't be always alpha all the time. Um, like, like my, my knee being injured now when, uh, when things happen, like if I, if I'm feeling down and out, like in Mexico city or wherever I'm, I'm, I'm set up at the time, I do like my girls. Uh, I do like my girls. My girls are feminine. I do like them coming over and if they cook for me or give me massages or, um, help me out or just do things. I don't even ask for like little details that just make my life better. Like I, I, I reward them for that in the term, in, in, in the sense of, uh, giving them more of those comforting type behaviors. Like, Hey, bring some PJs. Let's spend the night. We'll get some pizza. We'll put on a good movie. And, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to have like porn stars, obviously you want to keep it sexualized, but, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, feel free to spend the night. Whereas I know guys are like, no man, I'm super alpha. Like, like hit it and quit it, get your pump and dump or whatever. The, um, I, I was never at that point. However, I realized those were the results I was getting or the, let's take that back. That was never my goal, but the results I were, I, I was getting were indicative of, the uh mindset or were um were a manifestation or a consequence of the mindset of have to be alpha always alpha all the time is what i say um so i was i was i was getting laid a lot but i wasn't getting the results in terms of the quality of relationship with the quality of women or for the longevity uh that i wanted um i had to you have to constantly just keep the rotation going although to be honest now that i started embodying beta traits or i stopped caring about it um now that i've really stopped caring about it and if you guys look at uh, my dating videos on this channel, um, or if not, go to Modern Slackers on YouTube. Um, I did a Tinder breakdown, just a real basic one, uh, the other or last last Monday. Um, that'll give you an idea of how I do my dating life now. So I systematize it. It's an inbound lead generation system, and uh, and that makes it really easy for me. I don't really have to give too much time, thought, or effort to it. After this podcast, I can look at my phone at any given time. There's inbound WhatsApp, text messages, Instagrams. I have an Instagram tab open right now. I'm sure they'll be there. I won't do it live. I did that on that first podcast and some girl, some girl popped, she popped a pussy pic out there and then I had to go back and edit it and, you know, cover it up with the logo. So that wasn't too much fun. So, um, and then I don't want to out anyone either. Um, I, I need to, I need to be very careful about that because I know a lot of these topics are controversial for a lot of people. I get it because there are people in the space that I think make them controversial. However, when you just look at the information and the framework and the methodology in and of itself, there's nothing controversial about it. It's keep your eyes open take reality for what it is, take responsibility and accountability for your actions, realize that no one's here to save you and that you're the architect of your own universe and you can create your life to match whatever vision you have for yourself in your head. You just gotta, you just gotta do it. Um, and I, I know that's easy to say for me now. A lot of guys don't know how, and that's what my whole mission and my purpose is here to give you the tools and framework. God, these things always block my face. Um, 
I am a 2020 year old beat. I found it Richard Cooper and you this month. And you guys flipped my whole thought process mindset upside down. Thank you guys. In a year, I will become alpha for sure. Yeah, definitely do it. Um, uh, join, uh, follow. Um, I did a podcast with him last night. Well, I'll be recurring, I'll be a recurring guest on his program and he'll be a recurring guest on mine. We're just trying to lock down schedules. I think he'll be Monday nights, uh, post show for Richard Cooper. And we're trying to find a time that works for both of us where he can come on and do the visual aspect and live stream on mine. But, uh, check out uh moff he's one of richard cooper's guys i'm sure you've seen him before uh he has a microsite it is what is it it's beacons.com here let me show you one. it's beacons.ai forward slash moff and let me be sure yeah so make sure you join him there um or if you're in richard cooper's group you see him he, he posts all the time and uh he'll be on men shrine and i'll be on his uh, stereo app um if you can go there, uh, find out what he's doing. It's a little micro site. He's got coaching services there, links to any uh, program appearances or podcasts that he goes on. He uses the Stereo app. So if you download the Stereo app, uh, search for Moff. And you can actually go through his backlog too. I go on, I go on there at least weekly um, if you want some more content from me. Um, again, I'm trying to I'm, – I'm getting better at articulating kind of more of these in-depth topics. So as it comes together, I'll dial in on the messaging. Jesus Christ, you keep sending this spam shit. Um, What is the first step to become alpha? You know what? That's a good question. I think I'll save that for a future video, but to point you in the right direction and get started, um, I would say start, take an honest, let, let, let's do, I like acronyms. So let's do, let's do AAA to tie it up, to tie it up with like the Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever. Um, or trip, um, my, my bad. Uh, that's AA. AAA is the roadside service, but AAA, um, do an audit of yourself. And this requires you to be honest with yourself. Look in the mirror, like literally look in the mirror. Like I did, even when I was fat, take, take a photo and analyze yourself. Um, Ooh, I'm gonna have four A's now. Uh, analyze yourself, realize like, okay, well, maybe I'm a little out of shape. Maybe, maybe I don't like the way I look. Maybe my skin sucks. Maybe I'm smoking too much. Maybe I'm an alcoholic. Maybe identify the things that you want to change about yourself and be honest. That's really hard for a lot of guys to do. Like uh, we, uh, the, and Rich's show all the time, guys calling like, yeah, man, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm like 10% body fat. I'm like, bro, I'm like, like I'm like 15% right now. And you're, you're way, you're way more out of shape than I am. So no, you're not. Um, but a lot of guys, they, they think these things because uh, I've worked at a finance company uh, for years in California. Guys come in like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm like 8% body fat right now. I'm like, no, you're like 14 or 15 right now. You're lean, like you're, you're, you're healthy, but uh, you're, not, you're not as lean as me. And I can see that visually, and I know what I'm at because I track these things. So audit yourself, be honest, analyze yourself, um, take accountability for your actions. So if you're in a situation you don't want to be in or there's things that you – there's traits or – circumstances that you embody or that you're experiencing in your life that you don't desire, uh, start to take accountability and then take action on fixing those. Um, any step in the right direction is better than no, no step at all. So, um, God, I'm going to expand on this topic for a few, I will write this down in just for a future episode because now I've got a list of a words coming to my head and it'll make it really easy to memorize and do some cool graphics and stuff. So, um, audit yourself, analyze yourself, um, hold yourself accountable. You need to be honest and then you need to take action so in terms of my transformation it got to the point where when i initially lost the 100 pounds when i was when i was way younger when i was in high school it got to the point where i believe i couldn't find a date to prom and i, I asked a couple of girls and like one girl said she, she didn't just write like i was betas i was betas hell so like i, I was like, like will you go to prom with me yes or no well not only did she check no she flipped it over wrote like a very detailed response as to why she won't because i'm disgusting and she doesn't like me and she'll never like me that way and then Passed it along to everyone. I, I was in a garage band playing bass and the, 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 the lead guitar. She's actually really good. She was this girl's friend. So she took the note, like threw it in the garbage can. And I was like, and then here, here I was completely oblivious because I was, I was delusional. I'd look in the mirror, not see that I was fat, although everyone told me I was fat. Although I was always the slowest doing the mile run. I was always, I, I always got a courtesy runner in baseball because I always got on base, but I was always a liability to get around the bases. So my courtesy runner was someone fast. So I had like the most runs on the team because I always got on base, but I never actually ran the bases. But all of these indicators of reality right in front of my face, just completely oblivious. Like, no, I'm not fat. Like, like uh, you got, it, well, society lied to me too. Like, like you got to grow up before you grow up or like, oh, you're just big bone. Yeah, I've got a big frame, uh, which is nice. I don't need a lot of muscle to make it look like I have more, but uh, no, I was fat. I was definitely fat. So got to be honest with yourself and you have to take action. And at my point, 
it's you get to that point you're like this is bullshit i'm tired of this i don't want to deal with this anymore this is not who i am this is not how i visualize myself when i came to the root awakening with this note that this girl passed around that her friend her friend fished it out of the trash and tore it up and then the the girl actually wrote another one she expanded upon it further and then delivered it directly to me i think i still have it saved somewhere i used to save that shit and then I, i it's been so long i left home when i was 18 so it's been so long since i've been home that I'm, I don't know where it's at. Maybe in a shoebox and storage somewhere. I don't know. But if I find it, I'll post it at some point. But it was a pretty nasty note. It kind of tore me up. And then I asked another girl, and she is right after the note thing. She pretty – not not like public, public, like in a bad 80s uh, rom-com, but public enough to where there, there are bystanders that just saw her just shut me down pretty hard. So uh, so point taken. Um, my impetus for losing 100 pounds initially was like – I was hitting puberty. I had a delayed puberty too. Uh, when you're young, when you're an adolescent uh, and you're way overweight, you'll have a delay. You could possibly have a delayed puberty along with your stunted growth. Um, so I got to the point like, all right, uh, loud and clear. Women don't want to date me. And I've got all these hormones going through me. You're starting trying to go through me. Uh, they're fighting the fat, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to fix this. There's, there's a problem here. Um, didn't know where to start. Didn't know what to do. Just knew I needed to do something in Richard, uh, Richard Cooper's content, entrepreneurs and cars that, I learned that in the in the lack of clarity, do something and then just just start moving in the right direction. Although you don't know what path you're going to go down, how you're going to get there, or even what your definition of a clear destination looks like, just start moving in that direction because what you're currently doing, if it's not working for you, I'm not sure of your situation, but if you're watching content like this, I'm sure you're on your journey somewhere, whether you're in, you're in your first step or um, you're getting higher up in the transformation process. Um, I consider myself further along, but every time I go to a new level, I realize that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Like I'm hanging out with like millionaires and billionaires now when I go on trips and, and here I am just a couple of years ago, this time last year, I think I was just losing my job during COVID for, uh, for my, my financial gig, um, at the, the financial corporate gig. So really you just got to start moving in the right direction. Put yourself out there. It might be tough at first. Um, that's fine, but don't suffer silently. If you do prefer to go the introverted route, if you want to remain anonymous, um, that's that's absolutely fine. Not everyone's ready to put themselves out there yet, but really work on yourself. And this is advice. I, I'm the oldest of a, of, a, of a bunch of kids, and we're all pretty similar age. And my, my brothers, when they used to ask me, um, when I started doing my transformation, like, hey, what what do I do? Like, what's, what's the difference you're making? I noticed something in you. What's the change happening? And being new to these types of transformations, um, most people are like, Hey, I'm shot. Like I, I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about it. I was at the same point and I always tell them, yeah, don't worry about what other people think. Just kick ass silently. And if you do that enough, if you kick ass silently, another saying I used to, I, I like to say is, uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, oh, sometimes silence is the loudest noise because when there's nothing going on around you, you have to deal with what's in your head. And I think that is crucial to doing any sort of transformation, but we're coming up on the three hour mark guys. I didn't realize this was going to go that long. I pegged it for an hour 30 originally, but I'm glad I got deep into this stuff. I'll watch it back and make sure I'm not too long, too, too long winded. Um, give me feedback in the comments. Let me know what you like, didn't like what you do differently. Um, if I failed to cover anything, or if you want to come on and collaborate at some point, um, you can reach out to me. Men trying inst- Instagram. I'm usually on Instagram. I use it as my communicator because I have like 40 of these workplace production apps and I'm always getting notifications, but I'm always on Instagram because I think my brand will lean heavily on that. That's how I'm getting into the space because guys in the space just say, oh, he has a good Instagram and he has a good grasp on online dating. So that's my foot into the space. So go to Men Shine for more topics that are uh, men's self-development and, um, and uh, personal improvement. That is at Menshine, M-E-N-S-H-R-I-N-E on Instagram. Again, that is Menshine at M-E-N-S-H-R-I-N-E on Instagram or my personal side to see like my photography, my guitar reels, all sorts of stuff. How, how I just live my life in general. I'm not trying to brand it for commercial purposes. That's just, it's just a snapshot of who I am. My personal account is at Jaron Scott, J-A-R-E-N-S-C-O-T-T. Again, that is at Jaron Scott, S-C-O-T-T. And let me put it on the screen as I end this. So these are both Instagram that I would recommend you follow. That's the easiest way to reach me. You can DM me if you want to, if you want to collaborate or anything, if you want to come on and chop up these topics. I'm trying to figure out my content format and my schedule and my time and all that stuff. So I'm I'm new to the I'm new to the YouTube game. I do have a radio background when I was in high school, the, the, the fat nerd that you guys saw earlier. I, I was on the radio, so uh, I've always wanted to get back on it. I'm um, just got to figure out the format, uh, dial, in, dial in some details. The same way I dialed in my diet, my training, I'm going to do with this brand. So uh, if you want to watch me evolve through that process, I'm, and uh, 
this time around, I'm not going at it alone. I have guys reaching out, some really cool people like, hey, man, I want to collaborate with you. So, so I'm really excited for what this year has in store. I thank you guys for joining me for the last almost three hours. That is, that is incredible. That's helped me out immensely. The algorithms on YouTube to get my watch time up. Uh, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitch, I know that um, I'm simulcasting this. Um, it'll eventually go on. I'll upload the podcasts on. Uh, I'll syndicate them Apple Podcast, uh, Stitcher, and whatever the uh, Android store is. I have a service that'll do that for me. And uh, really, whatever platform you're listening to me on, uh, like, subscribe, share, do whatever you can do on that platform to show me some love. Definitely get in the comments. Uh, spread the word. And uh, if you're just starting your transformation, whether you're in step one or if you're midway or you're at the point where I am with your diet, like, hey, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at and I just want to share the good news with others, um, reach out to me. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to possibly bring you on, collaborate with you. And uh, we're all in this together, guys. I hope you have a uh, fantastic start of your 2022. And here's to big, bright, uh, new yous. And uh, with that, I will go ahead and sign off and have a good night. Thank you so much for joining me.